What is happening, everybody? This is Forrest with the Built on Blue Collar podcast. I am here in Sarasota, Florida area with Gary James. Welcome to my town. Yeah. I flew all the way out here just for this podcast. It is the only reason. Uh, I mean, I called him out on Instagram, and I think that's why he's here. But uh. I, Yeah, I, for, I forgot about that. He, he made a video of, of a job site with uh, Luke Kane. If you mm-hmm. don't follow him, go follow him. Absolutely. Uh, and then he called me out and said... Shots know, fired. Shots fired. And I was like, I'm just going to buy a plane ticket out there, and I'm going to hit that same job site. And then here he me, is. me joking around, next week I was here. So yep. he showed me his uh, what he does for a living mm-hmm. today, which was freaking awesome. And uh, so Gary is uh, the owner of Smooth Ops LLC, a training um, company that pretty much takes operators Puts them through some rigorous training, uh, mainly virtual, but also on-site if needed, right? Absolutely. Anything they need. Anything they need to really take um, operators and make sure that they're learning the right way, make sure that young operators are learning at all. Absolutely. Rather than being thrown out in the field and that the companies that are training these uh, operators are giving them the tools that they need to succeed as an operator in in the construction industry. Yes. So that's what we'll talk about today, but first... Things first. Pop it. As per usual, we went to Soda Wine and got some Chestnut Farms Kentucky Straight Bourbon. I told him as long as it's brown, we can get down. <laughs> so we'll pour a little bit of that, and then we'll Cheers. get going. Welcome. All the way up to the brim? Yep. That's good. Awesome. Here's to uh, meeting in person for the first time and uh, Honestly. you actually doing what you say you were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> he's here. I, I, I just told him, I was like, I'm just going to fly out there, okay? And he's like, all right. And then I was like, I booked my flight. I'll see you in a week. I said, and do it, and he did. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. but <clears throat> That's well, some good whiskey. Isn't it? I tell you, man, this, this is one of my new favorites. <sighs> if that don't loosen you up, nothing will. That's the truth. That's the truth. Well, this is episode six, guys. Um, I don't know what I'm going to title it yet. Um, but if you've listened to any of the other podcasts, you know as I'm trying to slurp down this whiskey. Um, <clears throat> we're not a politically correct podcast. We don't give a crap about that. Absolutely. We're not here to rub anybody's feelings the right way. We're here to talk the truth. And tonight I think we'll talk a lot of it and kind of express the issues that we see in the industry as far as how companies train their employees, how companies have done it in the past, how companies need to do it from here on out. Um, there's a lot of problems in the industry, and I think Gary is um, – one of the people in the industry that's doing it right and being able to take people um, and produce results rather than just sending them to an online course or some kind of you know, way of sending them out to a superintendent that's learned it wrong for 35 years mm-hmm. and teaches the young guy the wrong way that he's learned for 35 years. So we'll go into that and we'll kind of just dive in randomly on all this stuff because nothing on this podcast is ever scripted. So <clears throat> Gary, explain... Just kind of what you do at Smooth Ops, and I partnered with uh, CM Labs, right? Yes, sir. So you use a lot of CM Labs equipment. Um, just go through like a day in your life and what you guys try to accomplish as far as the training aspect goes. Absolutely. So uh, a normal um, training episode, if you want to call it, or experience back in the day would have been <clears throat> I, uh, I show up or a person like me would show up on the job site. We'd use the hands-on equipment and kind of try and mimic some – movements and scenarios that we would do on the job site, uh, you know, things we call like air digging, you know, putting fake buckets into a fake dump truck, things like that. And obviously, you know, from when I started to now it's worked, Yeah. but it works with, um, you know, what I call hog skin. Yeah. Your, your skin has to be about three inches thick because of the, the rigorous, you know, pressures that you're going to endure learning it through the field, you know, while yeah. I'm expected to have production numbers, you're also trying to expect me to learn my job. So before simulators, um, you know, it was all hands on one person at a time. I actually went to Colorado, um, you know, kind of on a whim yeah. and found this training facility and they were using simulators and I made myself available to walk into that place to disprove the use of these things. Um, Fast forward six months later, I started working for that company, uh, Next Gen uh, Equipment Training, Hala, in uh, Colorado. <laughs> Got to represent. Yep. Uh, I love you guys forever. Um, but I was witnessed 
or I witnessed, um, you know, honestly, magic. I, yeah. I had, you know, hundreds of operators uh, come through the training facility in Colorado. I was, I was taking new operators or green operators from never knowing anything to, you know, operating, like I told you today, and 10, 12 hours of, of simulator training. So that's what we do now. Um, my typical day is, you know, show up at the office, get the person um, secured with how do we do a walk around on a machine, what do we do in our pre-inspection and post-work uh, inspections, and then get them jamming on the simulator with real scenarios. So that's what we do now, and it it, um, it works, you know, half as fast, or, or you know, it takes <coughs> half the time. I didn't yeah. mean to say it like that. It it's, works half as fast. Yeah, half yeah, as fast. Yeah, it takes half as half as much time to train the person exactly on the same movements the same muscle memory and um you know you experienced it today yeah. at our home office yeah. and uh you know it's pretty awesome what piece of equipment did you try today that you didn't learn something on i mean i learned something on every piece that that's, i was there that's what it's all now, about now granted i'm i'm green when it comes to the equipment world i don't i've never been a you know professional operator but i've still operated equipment right you know and i definitely learned a lot as okay. far as hogging dirt and mm-hmm. moving cranes and yep so. yep i mean that that little crane trick that we learned today yeah. uh in you know what, what an hour um you know that's that's money making tips and tricks that uh it's very hard for me to teach you how to do that there's no second seat in that yeah. crane and uh, radio reception you know and all that only goes so far as far as communication i'd Absolutely. like to be right behind you whispering in your ear like a sweet lullaby yeah and Blair instead Linus. you just got to send them up there and talk through a radio and hope they Hope they know what you're saying. Exactly. Well, and, and see, <clears throat> I just thought of this now, but like we've been talking about how this has benefited the operator and the company as far as training the operator. Mm-hmm. But I, I see like after you talked about it right now is how much this benefits the superintendent or foreman on site because oh, yeah. at this time, now you're not a foreman worried about the million <clears throat> tasks that you've got to do on a daily basis, get production numbers and train a guy with the same equipment that you have on site. Exactly. With you know you can you know, if, you, if you can barely make those production numbers because everything's super competitive nowadays on a daily basis mm-hmm. how are you to even make those production numbers each day when you're trying to train somebody green right you know let me stop you right there because it's funny one of the reasons I am not in the business anymore and I do not have the work truck parked in my front yard is because I don't want that job anymore yeah the 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 thing that was impossible for me to figure out how to do was exactly that how to train these guys while doing my job yeah I felt like I was you know pulled in 400 directions on the job site while still trying to you know keep the the elevations in my head and where we are on the project and you know costs and yeah that kind of stuff so you know I I felt bad not having the time to teach the guys and it's not their fault. Well, and then it stresses you out. Exactly. Because, because you want to do a good job at mentoring people, but how are you going to do that if they've already waste, they've already given you your job that takes up all your time? Exactly. So, and, and that's the thing is a lot of people might seem uh, grouchy or <clears throat> impatient to mentoring, but in reality, if you're going to take a guy and have him as a mentor mm-hmm. for another person, you need to loosen up some of the time that he's got on a daily basis. Absolutely. And, you know, let's not take anything away from that grumpy old guy. You know, yeah. how many how many people have come across my lap that have wasted six months of my time? Yeah. You know, unfortunately, <clears throat> that, that next person that comes by might get that grumpy attitude from me because I just failed with five people that, you know, went six months through my, my wing and then quit for 50 cents and went somewhere else yeah. thinking they're the master of the universe. Yeah, they, they, they went out there for a week and figured out how to exactly. run it. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I'm good at this. Yep. That Honestly, it makes me yeah. look bad because we didn't finish what we started and you're going to talk about who trained you. Yeah. And, you know, you're not productive. You're just skimming by. and You think you are. Yes. Fake it till you make it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's, that's really interesting. I think so, like – we, we tested out, obviously, a few machines today. I wish we had time to do more, but we got on one machine and spent, like, a couple hours sitting yeah. there just because we were having fun, and you, Gary was teaching, and we were just chatting. You lose time when you're having a good time. Yeah. Like you you noticed, you know, the non-pressure atmosphere, and that's oh, yeah. where you, you don't even realize that you're gaining that muscle memory and retaining everything I'm saying. Yeah, well, and that's the cool thing is, like, it takes it takes the stress out of the, the learning and stress out of the teaching because, you're like you said, you're in that stress-free environment mm-hmm. in in – simulator where real production doesn't actually matter exactly but but teaching matters and that's that's where i think it's super important is that you've you've now eliminated all the other stresses and now you can focus on just what your job is which is teaching absolutely teaching and i think and we had we've talked a lot a lot today uh since we've been with gary all day long 
Um, we've talked a lot about the industry in, in a whole and what it needs to fix. So we'll probably reiterate a lot of what we talked about today. Mm-hmm. But overall, we just see that companies in general, not all of them, but companies in general, will take guys, hire them. The onboarding process is one day. Mm-hmm. They'll send them out to the site and say, go learn it. And then <clears throat> what happens is they either have accidents or they're doing terrible production for way too long. And, it, and instead of spending the little money that it costs to go train these guys, um, the right way, they're losing a ton of money in production and a ton of money in damages. Absolutely. Because these guys don't know what they're doing. You don't know what you don't know. Exactly. And yeah. it's it's really tough to do that in an industry today where we're hurting for people um, and we need them fast. And, and some companies, they don't see any other way but to hire a new a new guy and hope he works, throw him in a piece of equipment, try to train him on the few seconds you have during the daytime you and know, pray we- for... Luck, you we, know. We just talked about that today. Yeah. That, that uh, the gentleman that messaged me and we sent him to the job site and tried out. You know, it's just yeah. spray and pray. Well, and he ended up being a good one. He got hired. Yep. yep. But that's the thing is, you <clears throat> you send guys to the job site and just hope they do well. That's losing you a lot of money and a lot of time. When in reality, you just take that guy and don't let him go screw up somewhere else, but let him screw up on a simulator. Absolutely. Where it's not costing you fuel prices. So it's not costing you efficiency. I call it the two P's. The first P you need to do is practice. Then when you go to the job site, the next P that's going to happen is production. I thought you were going to talk about the Porter John for a second. <laughs> yeah. like, Remember, we talked about that on the back of the crane that's today. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you where, do, where, do you go, where do you go to the bathroom on a 240-foot tower crane? You make it rain. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Those guys will never understand. It'll just be a, a, a slight mist. They'll think it's some like humidity in the air or it, something. It'll turn into particles by the time it gets down there. That's it. <laughs> No, but, uh, you know, in all seriousness, that's, that's, um, it's hard to expect successful experiences or yeah. successful learning while you have your thumb right down their throat, yeah. you know, and that's how I grew up in this industry. And, um, Absolutely. you know, I'm not sure if you heard my starting story, but I, I know I told you guys today that my first job was, you know, watering the sod. When I finally, after a few years, got into the excavator, that was an absolute mistake yeah um i spent two years getting into the haul truck and then one day the excavator operator while my foreman was on vacation he showed up straight from the bar Mm. so he hadn't gone home yet i was uh, one of the off-road truck drivers and every time we'd back up to him in the pond he'd flip the bed of the truck over you know just yeah playing around which, you know, we all have a good time, but there's a there's a time to cut it off, and it's yep. definitely a time to cut it off, and there's no management on site, and we're responsible for ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that's time to, you know, buck up and be men, or yep. women, you know, women. What, how, we had yeah. women on our, our site, too. Nothing against them. Um, Come on. Yeah. Women well, are, darn women. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. How dare they show us up out there? Absolutely. They, I told you. What did I tell you today? <laughs> that, that they'll outwork a guy they in will. 10 times. They will. Yeah. So getting back to it. Um, <laughs> we'll come back to that later. Yeah, That'll ladies, later. we'll get right back to you. Um, so after a couple of hours of toying with the off-road trucks, I finally, um, got a text from my boss that the dozer man who was an older gentleman and kind of, you know, the boss on the site, if the boss wasn't there, uh, he took the role on, um, he had called it in obviously. So my boss had texted me and said, you know, what's going on? Yeah. What's happening. I was kind of like the teacher's pet, you know, my boss and I fished together, you know, click. So we were really good buddies. Um, Robert Studoff, if you if you hear this, uh, thanks for everything you taught me, by the way. But this was terrible. <laughs> so fast forward, he tells me to to haul it up for the day. It's Friday, and he's in Key West and just doesn't yeah. want to deal with this. So just send everybody home. So my my interpretation of what he just told me was take shit into my own hands. Oh yeah. So what I did is <laughs> it's Friday at lunch. I went and cashed my paycheck, which was probably like four hundred and fifty bucks at the time. And I split that between all of the haul truck drivers, and I begged them to stay after work so we could move the 4,000 yards of dirt that we had to move for the day. That's what our daily quota was. Yeah. We stayed until midnight. We moved 4,500 yards of dirt. When I showed up to work on Monday and my boss returned, I went from $7 an hour to $17 an hour, and I was the hoe man. Yeah. That's the only way I was accidentally moved into the position that was like my drooling dream job. Yeah. You took initiative. I did. You said the company has a need. And I'm going to solve it right yeah, now. Exactly. But there's two things of this story that are very important. One, I was ready for that moment, 
because I had bought my own key ring off of eBay and I had been staying every single night without telling anybody and practicing on all machines <laughs> I could until the sun went down. There you go. And the key to that is that can't be done anymore. Liabilities and insurance reasons, and you will get thrown off the job if not fired. Yeah. And or arrested. I still did it though. Exactly. So did I. <laughs> But the second thing, so I was ready for it yeah. when it came. Yeah. The second thing is, is I took that opportunity. I stepped Absolutely. up and I just did whatever I had to do. I paid my whole paycheck and, and we got that stuff done. Yeah. The next six to eight months, I don't know if you remember the next telephones, the beep beep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So The he, ones that had like fake diamond plate on it or whatever. Yes, yes, exactly. The black diamond yeah. plate, yes. <clears throat> so uh, those phones, whether you answer the phone or not, people... I don't know if you remember these, but you hold down the walkie-talkie button, and what you want to say is coming through, whether I want it to or not. <laughs> so for the next six to eight months, my job was to keep a pocket shirt or a shirt with a pocket on it and keep my Nextel phone in my shirt pocket and listen to every order screamed by Robert Studoff through this walkie-talkie, <laughs> phone, whatever you want to call it. Right arm up, right arm down, right arm into your thigh, right arm away from your thigh. Six to eight months of that built the nastiest excavator operator that has ever lived. <laughs> My name is Gary James. <laughs> but this you, you whole... know, we had a guy on, on our first podcast that thought he was the greatest operator. Well, too. they can all think. But... I, it's okay. I know you're better than Javon. <laughs> so come on, Javon. You're listening. <clears throat> I've, got, uh, I've got some medals. Yeah. I've got some awards. You know, and I'm not boasting. But, you know, <laughs> in real reality that uh, all of those circumstances were completely luck. Yeah. Where, you know... Out of the odds were lightning strikes, and I was ready for it. And I do not expect, nor can we expect, any other human being to do the same thing. You know, nowadays, people are different. The young crowd is different. They really don't have that. Well, wait, wait. You, you mentioned something that is a key element here is how long did it take you? Oh. You said six months, right? I was, I was oh, to be proficient? You said six months of that. Six to eight months of getting screamed. And I mean, I'm yeah. not, I wasn't getting talked talk to. So you I think. I was getting screamed at for eight, six to eight months. And that's what made the, the hog skin that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. You know, but you I, think six months of that or 10 hours in a simulator? Yes, sir. You know the answer to that. You I mean, know, come on. I, I, I can't. If you're a company man out there, what's the obvious money Absolutely. Quota here. I not only, you know, uh, let, let's let's back up for just a second because that, that foreman or, you know, superintendent at the time, Robert, he did make me a very, very good operator. And he took the time, God bless him, to spend yeah. the time with me. But like you said earlier, he wasn't doing his job. I wasn't doing my job. We were, yeah. there was too many people involved in just loading the truck. Yeah, so exactly. So that's the problem. He was, he, while he was paying attention to 30 other things, he was also glancing over his shoulder at you. Absolutely. Trying to run the excavator, essentially, you know, yeah. voice, voicing controls through the excavator. So yeah. how, how proficient was him or was he on the job site, you know, yeah. those days or months working yeah, with absolutely. me? So, it's, you know, yeah. and, and don't take away from, you know, the time before I even got that chance. You know, I don't, yeah. want, I, I don't want young operators or people who are interested in this field to forget you earn it before you burn it. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't mean you have to shovel until your, your fingers bleed. You just have to show that want, and I'm going to take care of whatever needs to, to happen. Yeah. I don't care whether I was the boss on the job site or the owner of the company. I'll outwork you. Yeah. That's the mentality that I show up with every day, or, or you can go home. I think good owners should have that mentality. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm My, a, when, when, and obviously, this is a different world, but I, I grew up in the carpentry trade. Mm -hmm. so we'd frame houses, and we'd lay you know, decking on the roof. And my, my boss, my owner, would be like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll race any one of you guys. Yep. And, of course, that was for him to get better production out of us because we were like, oh, yeah, for sure. And then we'd get it done as fast as we could. Absolutely. But it was also kind of cool because we had tried to outrace him, and he was good at what he did. So speaking of that, with this new form of simulator training, that's exactly what I do at the end of the day is I turn it into an absolute competition just to push yeah. them that much farther. Nice. To say, you know – I had to say to myself, driving over here, you know, I was up at, you know, 6 o'clock this morning, worked the normal day, we're here, at, I don't even know what time it is right now. I have no idea. But one of those things that I say to myself all the time that, that really resonates with me is if Forrest is still up and he started way before me, <laughs> I can be still up and, and yeah. keep going, so... I don't know. We were I, talking about sleep earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of it. If you, if you watch my Instagram stories today... He I hasn't got, slept in like a week. No, there, there was, there were, there was a couple months there where I had like, w when I was in New York last, 
I had slept uh, maybe four hours in like the whole week. I don't know. I don't know how. You, I mean, you're you're a different animal than I am. But it, it's I need not. My, I need it's my hotel. Sleep. If I'm if I'm in a hotel, I just don't sleep in a hotel very well. I can like, understand that. Well, and and I mean, granted, there was a. Uh, family reunion right outside my door oh yeah <laughs> and they were all drunk and there were about 30 of them sitting in the hallway just screaming and mm-hmm. no matter how many times i told them to go to the hell to bed they didn't yeah you so, just gotta go out and join them i mean i was about to but there were some there were some weird weird <laughs> folks there so i was like i'll just stay in here and try to drown my ears out with this pillow but it didn't work so that's that's what you get though when you're in hotels. Oh yeah, I, when, I've I've been all over the. You know, some are some are good and some are just yeah. absolutely terrible. That's why VRBOs or or something like that are it's way the better. Best way to go. You for me to do that, I've got to have like the whole team in the right the area. Make it worth it. Yeah, if yeah. it's just me and it's like eighty dollars, ninety dollars, hundred dollars a night, I'll just crash at a hotel. It's easier. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah. So our jobs have left us or led us. I, yeah, I should say. You know, from all the way from mm-hmm. the field to now, we just travel and try and smash as much knowledge as we can into these folks absolutely you're and talking about both of us or yeah, yeah yeah i mean we're both going down the same path pretty much hopefully we'll we'll be you know bouncing off each other here because we're it's, gonna see there's some <clears throat> there's some awesome stuff that both of us are trying to work up and think up and i've got ideas to make you not sleep mm-hmm. what sleep you're getting i don't we'll get take it. the rest of your take honestly your <laughs> last night dude was all work i was i was just thinking all work oh yeah i, I, I couldn't sleep at all. i knew you were coming and uh you know i purposely watched social media just to see how much you were gonna do and then get up and you yeah. know i knew you were gonna say you know headed to the airport yeah psh, like I getting on the plane <laughs> and i was like man he only slept like an hour if anything yeah no it was it wasn't fun i'm a little tired but this whiskey's helping out a lot it's easy to keep going when you uh have passion on on what we do I, yeah i think that's that's really it is uh so i i and i was talking to my brother um my best friend that i call my brother charlie about this because he uh i was working in kind of like a management role before i quit and started this Mm -hmm. and i would complain to him all the time about like office politics or like just the stress that the, the amount of work that i was having that was keeping me on the job site late there early in the morning, not mm-hmm. sleeping at night because I'm like, oh shoot, did I get that done? I didn't. Absolutely. I didn't do that, and it's it's two weeks late, right. and I needed to the job site. You know, whatever it is. Um, and and he he was in the field at the time, and I, I would talk to him. I'd share my concerns with him about this stuff. And he, him and I were on the phone earlier this week, and he's just like, you know, I never realized like what you were talking about mm-hmm. in, until earlier this week because he goes, I I I started. <laughs> he's like, I've never dealt with that until now absolutely and he's it's like, like another I, job yeah he's like i totally get it like you can't sleep like you're up at night you'll absolutely. wake up in the middle of the night and just be like oh no yep i didn't get that done and that's yep that's late like I, you know that's i've driven to job sites at midnight because i thought i forgot to shut the damn tractor mm-hmm. off you know what i mean i just you, or lock the gate yep i mean something stupid yep. like and that. it's all locked and it's all off but yeah you know you know but you just say, yep. it's, it's like it's like when you drive away from your house you're like did i close the garage door mm-hmm. or did i lock the door you know, something like, and that people, people don't understand when you, when you, you know, I tell people this all the time that, you know, I don't just love my job. Yeah. This is a passion for mm-hmm. me. Like I, I, Absolutely. I eat, sleep, breathe dirt. Yeah. I, I, well, that's what I, I go to places to. and I look at topographies and I yep. say, I do this and I do that. You know, this is, yeah. this is what I do. So it's fun. It's, it's easy to do. It feels like, yeah. you know, like I told you today, it doesn't feel like this should be my job. I shouldn't, yeah. I shouldn't be collecting a paycheck. Well, that's it. what I felt too. Like, so when, when I was working construction and all that kind of stuff, doing that, uh, I kept thinking to myself, you know, I was stressed out and I was not sleeping and that sucked. But then when I quit and then I didn't sleep, yep. it was because of, it was because it was fun. Yep. Like, it's, I don't sleep because I'm excited about what I have planned. I don't sleep because what what's coming up in the near future is something that's going to grow our business and hopefully grow mm-hmm. a community and hopefully better the industry, and it's exciting. And that's what I don't sleep about. Exactly. And that, that makes me happy, whereas what I wasn't sleeping about before was just killing me. It was not, it was not healthy at all. Well, we're, we're all going to sleep a whole lot one day. That's true. So just keep on powering through. That's it. <laughs> we can sleep when we're dead, man. Yep. Yep. We, you know, <clears throat> you don't, if you're doing it right, I, well, I, I don't want to say that. If you're really pushing yourself, you're probably going to have those, those nights, those weeks where you just don't sleep and you're going to enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. Um, 
you know, just so anybody that's listening, you know, if you follow any of my social media, I don't post anything that I don't believe in, it, yeah. including rap music, quotes, yeah. country music. If I don't listen to it, if I don't believe in it, I don't, I don't post, don't it, post or, it or or stand behind it. I just made a post the other day that was that was something to the tune of, you know, when you find that thing that you're that good at, you're going to be really, really misunderstood because. Mm-hmm. All I care about is this. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do have a family and I have a daughter and, you know, I yeah. do have family. I shut it. I know how to shut it off now. Yeah. But it was a very long time that I didn't know how to shut it off. You know, I yeah. went home and I was still dirt Yeah. all night like you're talking about. So, yeah. well, and I think like part of what you're saying, and we talked, touched on this earlier too, is like, like goals, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I share my goals with very few people yep. just because I feel like they're going to be like, that's not attainable. Yep. And, and I don't want to hear that. I don't yep. give a crap if it's attainable or not. That's my goal. See, I use my, my, not my thought is you shoot for as high as you can. And mm-hmm. if you drop lower than that, mm-hmm. then you still were higher, higher than, than what than you, you would yep. have been. Yep. See, so I, that, I'm, I'm fueled by literally fueled by the haters. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. You know, <laughs> but I just don't share it with them. Cause I'm like, I don't need to hear the hate. I already know it's brewing over there. Yep. One thing that will really push me to get something done is proving you wrong. Mm-hmm. that's that's what i love you know yeah i i've i've you know even with my little japanese car that's parked out there <laughs> my right hand drive car that i just bought you know no Freaking nobody sweet. believed what i was about to do you know as far as my friends and family and yeah. here she sits you know i'm i'm yeah. i'm okay with you not believing in what i'm gonna do because all you do is just yeah. put a motorboat behind me that's it yeah. i'm gonna go prove you wrong and yep. if it's only just to prove you wrong that's i'm gonna do well, it and i don't know about you but you probably use that same Self hate. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've got there, a lot of that. There was a many a night where I'm like, "This is bull crap." I'm, oh yeah. There's no way I can attain that. And then I'm like, "Shut the hell up." Yep. Like, no, it's I'm you know. Gonna do it. I, I won't get in. You know, I won't get into my my whole. I, I've had some. I've had some pretty shitty times in my life. You know, everybody has. Yeah. Everybody. Has. I'm not. I'm not anything special. I've had some times to where I really didn't think I was worth anything, and yeah. I was absolutely fucking wrong. Yeah. You know, I was wrong, dead wrong. Yeah. I am worth everything that everybody else is worth, if not more to, you know, at least to yeah. myself, you know, yeah. nothing against anybody else, but no, you're absolutely right. But I'm in my own little world and I'm, I'm the man. Yeah. I'm the man. I'm the Truman show of my life and that's <laughs> yeah. how I'm going to run it. And if anybody wants to watch and hang out, you're more than welcome. But if not, just get out of the way. Yeah. Cause well, I'm, cause I'm going to do things. I think there's, I think there's a bad, uh, I don't know mentality in society in general that mm-hmm. if you're doing good then you're selfish oh yeah and i'm, I'm yeah. sorry but if you're doing good that's that's good mm-hmm. good for you because guess what you had you didn't listen to all those people that were like oh well you're not going to do that or, the only reason why people will say anything like that is because they don't have faith in themselves yeah precisely they're like that can't i can't personally attain that so i'm not going to go for that there's no way you could go for that absolutely well, you know screw you you know it's not gonna it's not gonna stop me from speaking on this topic buddy because this all this all will tie back into training. I'll, I'll yeah, tie yeah, back we'll get back training, to it. But, but and, and, I, and I was, you know, this kind of pertains to that. Yeah. What you just said, I never in a million years thought I'd be sitting right here. Yeah. I thought today at five o'clock I would have been off digging. Yep. You know, I would have drove home and, and took my boots off and put them at the front door and and drank got up. Beer. And, yep, drank a beer and got up this morning or tomorrow morning and and did the same thing at six o'clock like we're gonna go do filming the yep. guys. Yep. And hanging out with the guys and and. You know, yeah. being cheerleaders. I want, I want to go to the job site and I want to pump these guys up to where they just yeah. want to dig till midnight. That's what Absolutely. I want to do, and that's how I feel every day. Yeah, so, exactly. Like we said, it's 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 hard to set these goals. You know, I never yeah. set this goal. I yeah. never thought in a million years that I would go from the guy that's watering the sod to the guy that's in the truck to the guy that's in the excavator to the running every machine that – I yeah. could possibly touch with hydraulics to, training to, now, veterans. to now I'm teaching veterans and, yeah. and new operators and traveling the, you know, the United States right now and hopefully the world. Yeah. Well, and that's, so on, on TikTok, on Instagram, we were talking about this earlier is that we both get like 20 comments a day, maybe more mm-hmm. of, of young guys, 16 to 18 to 20 to 22, 24. I don't care. Young guys. That Absolutely. Are, and they're, they're <clears> going, man, that's my dream job. Just sit in an excavator and run it all day long. Yep. Now, granted, they don't know that there's more than just sitting in an excavator and running it all day mm-hmm. long. And I try to make that clear. And it's possible to get tired of that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it does hurt. Yep. Your back does. hurts at the end of the day. It does. I've it, had, I've had two epidural or one epidural and, and about to go get my second epidural yeah. and, and it's not going to get any No better. matter how comfy Komatsu or deer or cat make the, the seats. So they're not, you're not meant to sit for that much. One of the reasons why I focused on, you know, I know you weren't here to train today. We were here to, you know, Play, talk yeah. and yeah, hang out. I will be back to train, though. Sometime. Okay, we'll see. Sometime soon. But 
one of the things that I focused on you and everybody else that I train, and you might you might remember this, is yeah. operator comfort. Yeah. I taught you how to stay comfortable for 10 hours all day. Yeah. Because I wasn't. Yeah. I am I you know, I was as tense as a frozen two by four <laughs> all day long while digging because I thought my body mm-hmm. tenseness and my my rigorous yeah. get this going attitude was digging faster and Focused. It's, and it's not. Yeah. You know, you, you can you can think smarter and think and work faster than you can ever move your muscles. Well, it's like it's like any uh, sport, whether it be football, basketball, fighting, you know, MMA, whatever mm-hmm. it is. The more loose you are, yes, the better at performing your your trade you are because absolutely you, you can't do anything stiff. You absolutely. can't really perform stiff, and that's the thing is you throw a, a greeny guy into a piece of equipment. Yeah, he's bored. He's, yeah, he's bored. He's a bored, and, and he will be super sore, just as sore as the guy in the yep. trench at the end of the day because he's stressed out. Absolutely, and and that that butthole is puckered. Oh yeah, that's just oh, yeah. how it is. You know, <laughs> it, it, not the first day, dude. The first you know six months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, the first month at least. You know, like I told. Yeah. I was talking to you and your dad today, you know, that first John Deere 450 I stepped in. That's the, that was my, that was my first step. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't blessed with a mini excavator, you right? know, a Bobcat yeah. or anything to where I was pulling first plants. Piece of yeah. The first piece of equipment I was introduced to other than the haul truck, the bucket wouldn't fit in a normal on-road dump truck. Yeah. So my first swing, I don't know how you could get any more intimidating. <laughs> you know, then, then my could first take out the entire truck. Just to absolutely. You know, I wasn't necessarily worried about his boards. I was worried about his truck. You the know? cab. Yes. If I take out the cab, that guy's dead. And I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so, you know, that's what I, that's what, that's what train, you know, circle back to training. Yeah. That's what training is, is all about these days is how can we get that, that same feeling, that same yeah. nervousness that I had, that same, you know, muscle memory, but without that, that the tenseness, stress. yes, yeah. and the stress. And, 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 you know, from my butt cheeks all the way down to my hands, having every muscle as tense as can possibly be yeah. because I am uncomfortable. Well, and that, that, that just brings me back to the messages that we get is, is these guys are like, hey, how do we get into this? And, and a lot of times I just tell them, like, research the companies around you, and we mm-hmm. talked about this earlier. Talk to the guys and the companies around you. Find out what you think has the best culture and then just go there and say, hey, I'd like to learn. Mm-hmm. Plug and yourself in. They will put you right on the ground um, – and you won't start in a piece of equipment, but that's Absolutely. okay. And you, like, just watch every movement. And you eventually know, you get there with the, you know, if you assert yourself and you're looking out for the, the team, you'll, you'll end up getting there. But it's just taking the step, no matter what age you are, that you want to operate equipment. Absolutely. And just going there and asking to learn. Because that's what these guys want to do is they want to teach you. But that's where you come in. Yes. Because when those guys say, hey, I want to learn. Yep, I'm going to shove it down your throat real quick. Exactly. Yep. You, you'll walk away with a monster operator. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Fresh you know, out. You know, I don't want to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to send anybody any guarantees in the, in the post office service, but <laughs> you know, you give me, you give me an honest week. Yeah. I'm going to make you money. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to turn you into a 20, $30 an hour piece of machinery as a human being. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do with you. But you got to show up with passion. You got to show up with an empty mind. Yeah. And I'm going to fill it with just genius machine moves. And we're yeah. going to make you profitable. Yeah, real absolutely. quick. That's what it's all about. Well, you know, we can do the same thing with with hands on. You know, there's yeah. nothing there's nothing wrong with the old style of of teaching. It just we have to take it outside of the job site. Yeah, that's that's the key here. You know, I don't want to make this all about simulation. Mm-hmm. It's it's all about training. The T word. Well, and and you bring up not all about simulation. That's kind of what. <clears throat> uh, that's one of the reasons, other than the podcast, and other than just coming out here networking. Yep, is to talk to to you and and we we've gone over this a lot as far as um how can we get a community together that thrives off of each other absolutely instead of making it uh just somebody's going to get trained how do you retain knowledge typically it's if there's an experience created out of it right right so if it's fun if it is something that you remember as as a positive experience you're going to withdraw all the negative stuff out of your mind yes you will retain the stuff that was a positive impact on you and how can we you and I, and and maybe these business owners, look at each other and say, "How how can we make this an experience for our people, so that not only do they make us more money, but they come into work energetic and, and happy to be performing for our company." Absolutely. So there's two ways to get endorphins going yeah. and to set something into your mind to where you never forget it. It's in that vault. Both of them are operating equipment, right? To scare you to death, 
or enjoying something. Yeah. Those are the only two ways to literally blueprint something into your mind. You know, that, that, that day that you've never forgotten or that, that moment that you've never, you can't, you know, if anybody was to ask you, what is your fondest memory or, you know, that, that thing that's just clicked in for the rest of your life, that's, that's only can come from, you know, I learned how to be the best excavator operator that I know because I was scared to death. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to do the same thing. And I've proven that we can do the same thing with joy. Yeah. Exactly. That's the difference. Well, and that's that's exactly uh, what what at least Eagle Eye is trying to do and what you're trying to do that's different than I think the rest of the industry is that we're not looking at it from a money aspect. We're looking at it from how do, how do people work? Yes. How, how, is, how is the average person going to retain anything? And I can tell you firsthand being on a job site, they're not going to retain anything if I walk out on that job site and I yell at them. Exactly. What they will retain, and they might get frustrated at the beginning, and I, I've told a few people the stories that I, I shut down multiple concrete pours. I shut down multiple utility yeah, operations. We, we talked about that today. Yeah, and and the reason is not to yell at them and not to get, not not to have safety as a bad thing, mm-hmm. not to have operating as a bad thing, but to take them and say, hey, th- it's not bad that you guys don't know what you don't know, mm-hmm. but what we need to do is we need to educate you on how to do it better, right? So don't think this is me hounding you. Right. This is me showing you hands on. This is the equipment that's flawed. Right. This is the equipment that you need to be using, and this is how you can actually take that. And you know what's cool is I I did a full safety stand down. Me and my superintendent walked around the entire site on a utility contractor, showed them everything that was wrong. We did not yell at these guys. We didn't put them down. There's no reason to. No, and and what we did is we said, hey, here's the explanation on why Mm -hmm. you can get fined for each of these offenses, right? The next day, their boss came out with brand new equipment brand yep. new tools yep these guys were in our office thanking us yep because now now they're not using this crappy tool that they've had for 15 years exactly they're using brand new tools and guess what that's a business expense that your owner needs to provide exactly you. Yep. and and the owner should want to provide that because it co- it saves cost in time and it saves cost in injuries and it you, saves cost in you know we just we production. just talked about at lunch today pay before or pay after mm-hmm for training. Long-term gratification versus short-term gratification. Absolutely. A, co- a company that is mainly focused on their first-hand production right now mm-hmm. will lose it in the long run. Absolutely. The per- and, and this is, I, I was telling you about this, is typically two of the questions that we ask our clients and our partners is we say, we, we consult our companies. We, and, and I was telling you this is, when we go out to take photos, we're not taking photos. Exactly, yes. We, we are learning. You're the, learning the, the, yeah. what's going on. And I don't know if I should have said that on the podcast because now all these people that I go out and I take photos, if they ever listen to the podcast, they'll be like, oh, he's an inspector. I'm not. I'm getting to know you guys on a personal level. No, you know, here's the difference. Here's the difference from the guy that's going out there just to bust your balls and, yeah. and point out flaws or a company like Forrest and Eagle Eye that comes to your job site just to, you know, improve and stop that accident before it happens. That's the yeah. difference. You know, there's there's training dollars that every company's got, whether yeah. they spend it in the right way or not is, you know, the difference the difference between, you know, yeah. saving somebody's life before we have an accident or talking about what happened to Jimmy after he's died exactly. or after we've had an accident and then fixing it. Well, and this is this is where I, I told you the two questions I ask is, <clears throat> how much are you willing to spend on your guy's safety? And un, every 100% of the time, the owner tells me anything. I'm yes. willing to spend it as much money as it's worth to make sure my guys are safe. Mm-hmm. Then you send a bill saying, hey, this is our strategy on how to create a safe environment for your guys. Mm-hmm. Not that you're not already a safe company, but here's things that we've seen that can be improved based on just our analysis on the job site. Yeah, you know, from an from you coming in as an outside yeah. perspective, you know, my my guys even get lax. If I if yeah. I say go grab the four ways, it doesn't matter whether those are ten year old four ways. They're gonna go get those four ways out of the trailer. So yeah, someone like yourself or your company coming in and giving an outside perspective just kind of just wakes you up on yeah. oh man, we got lax on this and we got lax on this. So let's let's get new yeah. stuff or let's resert. Let's do well, what we got to do and get going. And, and obviously, I'll just throw a biblical comment in here. But the, in, in the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. Yep. The, the more people you have on your team looking out for you, the better. So, Absolutely. Um, and <clears throat> so, uh, you know, one, our first question is how much money are you willing to spend on your guy's safety? Mm-hmm. And when we send them the bill and they get sticker shock, oh, yeah. the second question I ask is how much money are you willing to spend on your guy's dying? Yep. How much money are you willing to fork out when a guy dies on your job site? Because... Yep. If you're not being safe on a job site, if your operators aren't safe on a job site and, and it causes a death, you've just paid millions of dollars. Yes. You've shut down your business 
and you didn't win anything. Yes. So it's either you spend a little bit of money now on training your guys the right way to make sure that you give them the tools that they need to succeed and be safe, or you end up shutting down your business. When Absolutely. Because it it's not it, it's not when it. That's what I was just it, about to it's say, not brother. If. Yes. It's not if. It's, it's when it happens. It's all a matter of when something is going to yeah. happen. And 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 listen. We can train all day. We can implement safety all day. Accidents yeah. are going to come. They will. But the best prepared companies are going to have those accidents that are, yeah. you know, we need a Band-Aid. Or, or somebody needs their arm wrapped up and, and we're going to, the, you know, we, we deal with real yeah. shit here, people. Yeah. We know this isn't crab fishing, but it's not Publix. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're around things that will yeah. chop your fingers off on a heartbeat if you're not paying attention. Well, and I'll add to that is, okay, so accidents will happen regardless of what OSHA says. Yes. There's, there's not a single person out there that knows every single OSHA law. I challenge you guys, if anybody's listening to this, I, I would like to oh, find yeah, somebody. It's, a, it's impossible. I've read the book cover to cover, and then they come out oh, with a new book. Exactly. The, in, in every two months yes. or less. Yeah, dude, it's the it, same with MOT. Yeah. I'm, I'm MOT certified, but you got the last next four week. years, I have no idea what happened. Honestly, and, <laughs> yeah. you know, I talked to this on the first podcast we ever had. We talked about this. Is like if, if somebody jumps out of the industry for a couple of years and oh, then yeah, comes you're, back you're, in, you're, you're, you're starting naked. over. You're naked. Yep. Yeah. So, but like. That, that's the thing is nobody's going to come out and be perfect, right? That's why we have a team environment, and that's why you every guy looks out for every guy. Absolutely. You're still going to miss stuff, and that's I, – I don't want to say that's okay, but that's okay. Like, Absolutely. Um, how do you limit that to almost non-existent on the job site? And, and, and here's the other thing that, that, that companies don't think about a lot of times is, you know, let's say, you know, the company that I was working with last yeah. was, you know, around 60 to 70 employees – you got one safety guy that's managing all these guys. Honestly, you know, you bring in a, you bring in a company like yourself, and yep. you really you really open the envelope on what is going on on every site. Not yeah, yeah. I visited a site this week. Yep. No, we visited every site, and these are the things that we found. And and well, and if you're a safety guy and you are visiting all sites, there's more more things that you're missing that you don't know. Yeah. If you're if you're if you don't have yeah. the complete passenger seat stacked with paperwork of yeah. things that need to be fixed. You're lying to yourself. Well, and, and it also, if, if you're a safety guy and you think that they don't know when you're there, you're, you're kidding yourself. Exactly. exactly. The second, you, they yes. can smell you 10 miles away yes. coming. Oh, yeah. Believe me, there, oh, yeah. There, will, there will be a job site down the road, and they'll call the other job site and be like, hey, safety guy's coming. I was just about to mention something exactly to the tune of that. Yeah. You know, I'm a company man. Yeah. But I've been warned as a foreman as a, and as a superintendent as for myself yeah. every single time the law dog's coming. Yep. Every single it's, time it's, the, the owner's going to do a visit or the safety yeah. man's going to come on site, I have a warning. Everybody's yep. vested up, hard-headed up. The minute they leave yep. or the next Monday, they're all shirtless, shoeless, back in the trench. Well, you, you know what's funny is when that happens, you find out really fast how much your guys actually do know. Absolutely. Because they'll Absolutely. hide the stuff yes. that's wrong. They go get it all out of the trailer. Well, not only that, yes. but they'll they'll take tools that are <clears throat> bad and yep. they'll put them away. Absolutely. Like, you'll find out real fast if yep. your guys actually know what safety is because mm -hmm. they'll hide it. Absolutely. So <laughs> now, here, now here's, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and say, that's bad culture. Okay, I learned. I was just about to solve I learned that. In, I learned in companies that had bad safety culture. And so, I'm not saying any of our partners do any of that because they don't. And I think that's no, but that's we've both culture. seen it. We have. Yeah, I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. You know, to go even farther than that, I've seen. I, I've you know, we talked about today. You know, recording everything and and documenting yeah. everything that happens on my job site. That's one of the reasons I went to the top of yeah. my level. Is I'm very meticulous on you know. CYA. I, I'm going to send my my boss 400 pictures today. Yep. I don't care whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. That's that's the data that happened today. And if we get screwed, we've got something to go back to. Absolutely. But um. I lost my point on that, where I was going uh, with that. What were we talking about? Your, your guys know safety. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> one of the things that we implemented, and thank you for bringing me back to my yeah. topic. I've had a half a glass of whiskey. <laughs> Not um, even. I can see. Yeah, I know. I've had it was a mostly water. glass of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> and the ice is gone. So yeah. um, in I've, Colorado. I've filled up a few times already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Colorado, one of the things that, you know, I don't, I don't say this, this, phrase a lot yeah this blew my mind miss terry that owns oe construction in colorado i witnessed her safety director they go to the job sites and they hand out these chocolates yeah so if you it's pull a up, small task with some it is important. it is so this is what happens he shows up on the job site at random nobody's warned and i you know i, I tested this theory yeah he's literally pulling up on random he's literally pulling up in a he goes and rents a car yeah pulls up in a random car yeah. Nobody knows he's on the job site. He's in there with his 
fifty dollar binoculars from you know a mile sporting away. goods. Yep, a mile away, <laughs> and he sees who's got their PPE on. Yeah. Then he pulls into the job site, and everybody that's had their PPE on, he hands them this chocolate, and it's like the the Longhorn Steakhouse green yeah. mint that you want yeah. every single time you finish dinner. The key is that they all keep the wrappers. Obviously, yeah. the chocolate's going to melt, or they're going to eat the chocolate right away. When we have the safety meeting twice a year, every employee comes to the safety, you know, the employee mandatory meeting, however you want yeah. to design it. When everybody's together, every one of those wrappers is worth $20. That's, that's awesome. These employees were showing up and banking hundreds of dollars in front of me. That's amazing. Which is obviously the best way I've ever seen spending training dollars. Absolutely. If you can't train these guys with cash, Nothing else was going to work. <laughs> and the fact that Miss Terry was taking profits out of her own company, you know, yeah. effectively her own pocket, if you yeah. want to be, you know, really giving her a pat on the back. Yeah. She's taking money out of her own pocket as a completely sole owner of this company, an operator of this company. And I don't mean anything by this, but an older woman. You know, she's yeah. got older mentalities of thinking, but absolutely tuned in with today's mentality of operators and men yeah. on the job site, nothing against women because they're there too. We've covered that. These guys were making hundreds of dollars and the morale that I saw come from that was worth more than any of the dollars that she had ever spent. Oh, I'm sure. These guys are so yeah. worried about that next 20 bucks that they could possibly do or get that it doesn't matter whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday. It doesn't matter whether the safety guy is on vacation. They've got their PPE on they are dotting their T's, crossing yeah. their I's on the job site, and just making sure that everything is just on point because the company invests in them. Well, and that's and to, the difference. To be honest here, uh, I, I would have been thrilled with a kind word. Absolutely. Because there, me too. There, me are, too. there are a lot of guys sitting out there right now that are busting their butt that never get told, hey, man, you're doing a good job. And guess what? They're thinking about quitting tomorrow. Yep. Because they've never been told they're doing a good job. Absolutely. I've been there. Absolutely. I felt that. And I'm like, I don't know why I'm busting my butt if not a single person. A blow pop goes a long way, way, let alone $20 every no, time no I see kidding. you have your hard hat on. I, I, I mean, literally just, hey, if you're an owner out there and you're listening to this, literally a kind word can save you mm -hmm. thousands, if not hundreds of thousands in retaining it. Absolutely. As far as like retraining people and, and losing people. It, it's that simple. I don't want to get... Cases. You know, I don't want to get soft, but speaking about that, training and actually spending time on any employee or all the employees that you can possibly give all of your time. I've had some of these men and women text me things that almost make me want to cry. Yeah. You know, this was my dream job. Thank you so much for, you know, actually spending time and digging deep with me. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I've had trainees to where I had to say, this is going to suck. Yeah. But I'm going to get you there, and I'm going to get you there real quick. So just yep. buckle up. And they buckled up, and the people that did buckle up are, are out there right now operating. And when they send me pictures, it. <laughs> you know, and, instead of, you know, the, the, the guy that I, or the lady that I said worked at the ball factory, yeah. you know, running a forklift, and she sends me a picture, you know, on her 944 front end loader well, out there on. making $28 an hour. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. I, I, I don't want to divulge too much of how much she was making, but yes. it wasn't that. No, how, it was. How it was, long did it take you to train that lady? So nobody's going to believe this. Nobody's going to believe but this. But I, I literally... But her company does. Yes, her company does. And, and she, guess what? Their company is saving a whole lot of money right now. Absolutely. So this... this and they young, retained a good employee for life. Absolutely. Sorry, not, I had to say that. It's not just, only did she come in with... You know, she came from, from a factory setting. So she yeah. already had that, that I'm going to get it done mentality. You know, yeah. it's a fast-paced factory she was yeah. working in. And she was a forklift operator and, and kind of running like the shipping yard-ish. It turned into a, a four-hour training session with this young lady. Um, I've mentioned to Forrest a couple times today that with the simulators, we can cover so many scenarios in a very short amount of time. Yeah. I don't want to train anybody for eight hours or ten hours because it's so much information. I want you to retain this. Yeah. This young lady came in at 8 o'clock in the morning and left at lunchtime. I never saw her again. I got a text a week later. Well, and let's explain this. So most of the time... <clears throat> you, so it prints out all the results. It shows your, your yes. progression. But it also, when you send that person to the, the client, back to the client. I send all of that information with them. Yeah, but then they go, this is proficient or this yes. is not proficient. Yes. <laughs> and so obviously, they were happy with how much you trained that lady. They were not only happy with how much we trained that lady, 
They didn't have to send her back, like I just yeah. said. So, Which so saves what, them even more money. Yes. Yeah, so what we what we did, and, and this is you know obviously you, this was this was an absolute unicorn. You know, let's not say that every per, every, every person is going to do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So she had the skills, she had the want, she had the drive, yep. she had the time. She spent the time with me. The four hours she retained every single word, every single tip, every single trick that I gave her. She went to the job site. Within a week, the people called me. I won't mention the company because, you know, mm-hmm. we opened to the public and it yeah, was kind of, of no-no to talk about everybody. But this this company called me within a week and not only said that she was, you know, a productive operator, but she was the best operator that they had on the lot at the moment. So she yeah. was running like a soil cement plant, you know, like a yard. Yeah. Um, they would recycle the concrete and then send it through this machine, make it into soil cement, haul it out. Um they signed, you know, a 50-hour or so contract after that and started sending every More single people. employee that they that they had and, and you know, this, to the same success. Do but you think, okay, so, and, and if it's not, if it's, if I'm not mis- mistaken, every company pays like an hourly rate correct. in bulk, right? Correct. So you say, okay, I want to invest this many hours into my, my team, and then they send teammates as they need exactly. to you. So you, you think, okay, I've invested <clears throat> X amount of dollars, a couple, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, whatever it is. Yes, to train these people. So just to stop right there. Okay. She costs 400 bucks. Yeah. Exa- yeah. yeah. That's, that's at next gen, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at a different training facility nowadays and it's a yeah. little more than a hundred dollars an hour that we charge. Yeah. But at that facility, it was a hundred dollars an hour square that we charged. Yeah. She cost that company $400 to turn into the most productive front end loader operator that yeah. they have. So let me ask you this. If com- I, if I cost four hundred dollars every time I show up on the job site. I ruin something that costs four hundred dollars. Yeah. Just to let you know how much four hundred dollars <laughs> means on a job site. Well, so how many how many people do they have that that cement plant? That I think plant? they were in the teens. I so, think it was so, okay. under twenty. Let's say let's say twelve to be shy. Right? Yes, twelve operators. Multiples over six years. Multiple operators that okay. had six years plus at this company. So if you have multiple guys that have more than six years experience. And they're not doing as well as an, as an operator that just has four hours experience on the simulator. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you're you telling me that you're saving production value by sending somebody in for four, $400, and you're also saving the money and training that person. Absolutely. It's, it, it is a no-brainer to send your entire team to go learn more and save you more time and more money. There's that, I, I, don't know, I don't know if anybody would be able to argue this fact. Here's the difference. If you're on site and you're, you're training somebody, you're training them to just – be able to effectively do that job. Yeah. So if Forrest shows up on my job site tomorrow and I only have an excavator and you're my only operator, I just need to maintain you putting the dirt in the truck if that's yeah. our task. Yep. The difference that the simulators provide and I provide, you know, personally, I can't speak for every other trainer, is yeah. I'm going to give you things that you've never seen before. Yep. I'm going to give you what I learned after 15 years of hurting my back. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you, after 15 years of scraping the boards on the truck, I'm going to give you that tip, that yeah. trick. <clears throat> I'm going to give you the reasons why you can't do it as fast as I can. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go straight to, and that's the difference from, you know, take going to training or training while you're working yeah. is, is the, the, the tips and tricks. You know, I, I don't want to leave it all just to the tips yeah. and tricks, but that's what it's all about. You know, when I showed you today that, on that tower crane, if you bring the load all the way up to the to the boom or to the steel yeah. or to the, the trolley, as it's called, if you bring the load all the way to the trolley and then you yeah. move your crane and then you lower the crane or the trolley or the hook. Yeah. It's way faster it's than way letting faster. It swing there for five yes. hours. Rather impossible. than having a pendulum going for 20 mm-hmm. minutes trying to catch it because you've Absolutely. got 400 feet of line out. Yeah, exactly. You won't know that because no one ever showed you that on the job site yeah. because it's not – Cared well, about that extra thirty <laughs> seconds? Nobody cares about because yeah. you're moving the crane and the crane is getting the job well, done. And I, and, and I was pretty proud of this. Okay, this is just I'm not an <clears throat> operator. I've said that a million times. I don't know how to operate equipment. I'm not a professional operator, but I, I know like certain tips and tricks that helped me when I was operating equipment mm-hmm. for an inner. I was a general contractor, so I was just doing it for fun, and right. I was doing it to help out the subcontractors. And necessity sometimes yeah, when you well, have to just do it. Scratch your back. I scratch. You yeah. know, scratch yours. So like. It was kind of like a share that the load kind of thing on those exactly. sites. And so I'd hop in equipment and I'd go to grade out some stuff and I'd mm-hmm. hog some dirt and stuff like that. But one thing that I learned is that on most, most or if not all, I don't know, 
loaders, tire loaders, mm -hmm. the top of the bucket is supposed to be level with the ground, right? Yes. So I was on site with a guy, um, and I was shooting with this, and he's brand new. Like first, second day, first week in the, in the loader. I big, remember you telling old, me about this. Big old cat tire loader. And I, I was taking photos of him getting like quarter buckets. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, this isn't going to show... Your yeah, you can't. Yeah, even I though can't you're show your company, even in a good though, light, you're, right? though you're there to show off the company, you're yeah. saying to yourself as a experienced, somewhat operator that, hey, I can't even show this because this is because somebody's going to look at you and call you an amateur, exactly. right? And and we know that the the veterans that were on that crew would, wouldn't have been doing it that way, right? Exactly. They were giving this guy some training time. So I walked up to him. I cr climbed up in the cab. I said, "Hey, um, I don't know if they've told you this yet. I, I've noticed you've had some issues getting a full bucket mm -hmm. and loading the trucks in time." Look at that front flat bar on the top of that bucket. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that is level with the ground when you go into the ground. Now I mean you can poke, you know, push down to the ground a little bit, but just remember that's level when you set your bucket on the ground. That's level. Yep. It, first load after I told him that full bucket flowing over the top. Yep. Some of the coolest photos I've taken. Yep. Of that cat loader, it dumping that those loads. You, you he have was to so have this, proud of himself. You have to have the spillage to get that shot. Honestly, the spillage. Mm -hmm. yep. it, it, that's it. And that's the thing is, it, I felt good because. I, I probably saved that company if they hadn't told that guy. Oh, you probably saved him four hours of productivity that day. Yeah, and and it and it was it was good because it it, it was just a little tiny detail yep. that could have cost a whole lot of money that nobody had taught that guy. Yep, and it's not it's not the company's fault. It's just that they hadn't noticed it. Okay, see not a bad that's thing. that's the point. Just because he's not killing people, yeah, there's no reason to focus on him, and that's not what we should do. Yeah. It, just because the guy is loading trucks every two and a half minutes doesn't mean I can't make him load that truck in a minute and a half. Exactly. And, you know, I, I don't want to make it all about dollars. But well, it, and, but and it I'm going to bring it out of that in a second. But it is. Yeah. It's all about dollars. When, well, it, whether I own the company or I'm working for a company, I'm there to make you money. Well, and let, let me bring this into the aspect. So as an owner, we've talked a lot about how an owner should look at production value, should look at dollars, should look at training savings. Mm -hmm. And should be able to take a green guy or a guy that's been there for 35, 40 years and train them and, and get a better production value. Now, let's take a step back. Let's look at the guy that's that's fresh into this. Mm -hmm. and, and his owner or his project manager or whoever, superintendent, walks up to him and says, hey, you're making $12 an hour as a, as a labor hand. Uh, I've noticed that you're busting your butt. Yep. And I want to send you to a training. Okay? Mm -hmm. I want to send you to a training to, to operate equipment. Like, like we were talking about, he doesn't even have to mention a raise. Yep. That kid will be yep ready to go instantly like, hell yeah. Absolutely. I'll be there tomorrow. Absolutely. Hey, we're going to fly you out to Orlando to train with this guy. Mm -hmm. Do you think that kid's going to say no to that rather than being sitting sitting out in the heat or the cold all day long? Right. Well, guess what? You've just taken a $12 guy an hour. You, you Not that you're still going to pay him $12 an hour, but you could. Right. But you've See, turned him into a $25 an hour guy. There's always that lapse, too. You know, yeah. that, that, that lapse that... You know, I'd like to talk about this because as an operator, any operator that's listening to this that's in this gap, I want you to just shut up and hold on. <laughs> that's what I want you to do. I want you to remember this. Shut up, hold on. Yeah. When you go from the laborer to that first time that your boss gives you that chance in the machine and you, you do it okay, you know what I mean? You're getting it done. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Don't ask for money. When you're proficient, when you're efficient – when you're productive, when you're doing it without anybody giving you any tips and tricks, that's when it's time to come to your boss and say, "Hey, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've, I, I appreciate myself. that. I appreciate you giving me the shot. Let me know when I've proved myself to get this money that I'm operating under or the title that I'm operating under." A hundred percent of the time, when I've moved people up to that piece of equipment, yeah, within a week, they piss me off with that. With that, I want my money. Yeah. You know, I didn't just give you this shot, and I'm not wasting my, my training time on you to not pay you. Yeah. But how about earning your way to the pay, not yeah. just into the machine expecting the machine pay? Yeah. That's two different things. Well, and if, <clears throat> if you're working for a good company, they're, they know. their importance factor is going to be making you happy if you work for a good company, right? So absolutely. I'm not saying that there's not companies out there that will hold you at a $12 an hour rate no, they, as long no, as they no, will. No, absolutely. That's why I wanted to talk about this because yeah. we just stumbled on this. They will hold you there as long as you will be comfortable there. So don't forget about that. This is business. Yeah. But I want you to value yourself when it's time to value yourself. That makes sense. Let's say that. Yeah. Just because yesterday 
you got a chance in the excavator doesn't mean you're doesn't worth mean it. you're you're an excavator operator. Yeah. Because you took a, a Instagram shot digging and loading <laughs> the truck doesn't mean you've done. Wait, wait, your wait. Time. Are, are you talking about that classic shot where you're inside the cab and yes. you can see your feet at the bottom controls? Absolutely. Wait a second. Are these my boots? Oh no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, look at this. Look at this ditch I'm digging. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no trucks around. It's I, probably not even running. Still to this day, I don't know how they take that shot because their hands are on the sticks. I don't know. And their feet are. I don't know. I don't. What Somebody's are they, are sitting they, on their lap. Are they? Maybe they got a buddy. Are they holding it in between their teeth or something? I don't. <laughs> I, don't know. I can't take a phone photo <laughs> with my tongue, guys. I'm not that skilled. So you know, if you're if you uh, if you find yourself listening to this, <laughs> and you've just gotten promoted, let's call it that, into the, the, the machine. Two people we have listening to this. Yeah, I'll, both of you. Listen, <laughs> if you just got your chance in the machine, and I'm talking about when I say just got your chance, I'm talking about like. Shut up for 60 days. Yeah. You know, really earn your... Shut up for a year. Yeah. I've never asked for a raise. I have. I prove <laughs> I prove that you need to pay me more yeah. or you're going to mm-hmm. lose a valued employee. Yeah. I absolutely. literally make myself so valuable that you're scared yeah. that I'm going to leave. Yeah. That's, what, that's how I do my raises. I go to my boss and I just look him square in the eye and he, he knows. He knows. He, he knows. Can see. Oh, yeah. I'm hungry, he, buddy. Guys, it's the anger within the eyes. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know... Kill them with effort. Yeah. Well, no, I think, okay, so that's that's one thing I always appreciated. So I might not have worked for some of the best companies. I still think they're not bad companies. I think people in the company are bad that are causing a bad culture and causing yes. a bad environment. That's a good but way to put it. I had, they're great companies. They're good companies. The owners want to have a good company, have a, have a good culture. The people that are working for them, they don't realize are cancers to the society. Mm-hmm. Now, when, when I first moved to Dallas from Florida, and I was working, I was telling you this earlier, is that I would I got on site first couple of days, first week, I kept hearing, and it's mostly Hispanic down there, so I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know, give my little Hispanic impression here. But, it, you know, they, they would look at me, all these guys would walk up to me, and they'd be like, hey, take it easy, take it easy. Yep. And I, I told you, I was like, I didn't know what they meant. I was like, bro, I'm not stressed about the job. Like, I'm, I'm doing fine. It's okay. Like, no, I don't need water. Like, it's okay. Yep. And then I'd keep working, and they'd be like, take it easy, take it easy. And it's like, they didn't want me to outwork them. Exactly. Well, in, within two weeks... I was their foreman, and mm-hmm. I was running 15 guys. Yep. And these guys were way older, way more experienced than I was. And, and I didn't know anything about the construction <laughs> as see, a general contractor. But the reason that that happened, and I didn't ask for a raise, and I didn't ask, they told me they mm-hmm. were going to give me this. They didn't give it to me. But they, they saw somebody busting their butt, and they gave them the opportunity, and I wanted yep. to make sure I didn't let down that opportunity. Yep, absolutely. And, and that, that guy that <clears throat> promoted me, he, he told me why he – promoted me to the labor foreman was because that he could see that and that he, it wasn't it wasn't about money for me yep it was about the opportunity to be able to like better the company yep and and prove yourself you know you yeah. go in there with a little bit of pride and you're just like hey i'm i know i can do this look if you're not working 150 percent yep for your employer you're stealing from your employer yep 100 percent. and and guess what if you're an employer and you're not giving your people 150 percent you're stealing from your people it's the same it's the same thing yep now that that guy is still a really great friend. We haven't talked to him in a while, but he that superintendent is a really great friend of mine. Um, but it's just you, you just got to show your effort, mm-hmm. and and at the at the right time, like you're saying, you'll be able to walk into there and be like, guys, look, I've I've given you a lot of effort. I, if you haven't given me a raise yet, like you you know I'm worth it at this point. Yep. I've proved myself. Yep. Just have the conversation. Yeah. Just and, say, and that's hey, a, this is what I'm thinking. To this be is honest, where I'm at. Most companies want to have that conversation. Yes. And if you are just real and you're stop right there. Yeah. Not one company is going to come to you. No. No one is ever going to beg you to take more of their money. So yeah. remember that. Yeah. You know, d- put in your time. Yeah. But know when it's time. For and sure. Don't be ridiculous. Don't walk up to them and be like, "Hey, man, I want like 65 hours for a 25 hour position." Yep. You know that's not going to happen. Yep. But value their money that they're spending on training you as well because whether you're a green employee whether you've been there in the industry for 35 years and you're new to that company they they don't they can only trust you as much as you trust them yep and and if you're in a good company you're going to end up building a trust you're going to build up a reputation you're going to become family right in exactly a good, in a good company exactly um and it's important to find those companies and most likely those those are the companies that we as eagle eye are trying to get trained exactly because I think that's a huge and nothing against screw up. nothing yeah. against the bigger companies, but yeah. you know the mom and pops are where I'm home. Absolutely, that's where I you know when I can call my owner yep. of my company and say, "Hey, I'm going flats fishing this week. You want to go with me?" Yeah, that's where I belong. Well, and and I don't know about you, but 
I thrive on helping companies that don't know it all. Exactly. Because yes. I, I can come in and make a difference, right? Yes. The companies that know it all, look, we'll still work with those companies that have great culture already and Absolutely. have a great system and have a great structure. We will work with those companies because we like that. Um, but I love, I love coming in and helping to build up a team. I love, I love coming in and making a difference. Um, and the other thing I focused on at. also that, you know, uh, shout out to my, my uh, mentor, Gary V. Gary V. Gary V. I, I, if I'm not, the, if I'm the smartest guy in the room, I'm out. Yeah. If there's nothing I can learn from, from the people that I surround myself from, <laughs> I'm wasting my time. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. take that as, you know, well, with a grain me, of salt, your, your, your new operators, you know, let me dive, let me dive into that is that, um, Experience on the job site doesn't requ- doesn't doesn't mean you have knowledge. Absolutely. Okay. So, Absolutely. And, and we were talking about this earlier. Is that <clears throat> you can be in the industry for 35, 40 years, and I and I hate this when people are like, "Oh, I've been in the industry for thirty five years." Well, yeah, you you know jack crap, right? Okay, because I've been in it for two, and I know you're wrong. Right. Now it's okay to be in it for a long a, a short period of time and know that somebody else that's been in it for a while is long because you can be in the industry for thirty five, forty years and be trained in the wrong Absolutely. way to do it. Absolutely. And that means you have zero experience. Absolutely. You might have 35, or ne- 40 Or even years. negative. Yeah. You, know, you might be just causing us time and money. Absolutely. I had a superintendent, and I will forever talk about the superintendent because I think he's a piece of trash. And if you listen <laughs> to the podcast, I don't give a crap. This is going on LinkedIn. He follows me on LinkedIn. I don't give a crap. I, I was on a job site, and this cost millions of dollars that we never fixed, that the owner never caught but I told them six, seven months before it happened. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, the, the, the mason didn't have uh, popping control lines in his mm-hmm. bid. Okay, big deal. Mm-hmm. I know how to pop control lines for his walls. Not yep. a big deal. Yep. I'll go out there and I'll, I'll buy it. I, I'll, I know I need this piece of equipment, this piece of equipment, and I can pop control lines. Yep. I've been educated by another superintendent in the same company how to pop control lines the right way. Mm-hmm. This guy's like, hey, took his assistant superintendent. Go measure 60 feet off each corner of the slab. Yeah. Pop he's, control he's lines. He's doing the old... Put an X out there and figure Absolutely. it out. Yeah, yeah. That, well, ain't so, gonna, that ain't going to work. So guess what? In a concrete slab, if you're off a 32nd. Oh, yeah, it could be a 16th. Or you're like yeah. you're saying, yep. A 32nd. It's, it's all in, off. In three, 400 feet. Yep. You're off four or five inches yep. at the other end. Well, guess what? I, I went in there. I told them. I said, hey, this is, will not work. You need to let me go out there and pop control lines. Yep. Forrest, I've been doing this for 35 effing years. Shut the hell up. You don't know what you're talking about. You've been doing this for five. Absolutely. I was like, Okay. Yes, sir. Don't don't come to me later yep. down the road <laughs> yep. with a change order. Yep. When I told you this, I talked to my project manager. She says, "Look, he's right. He's been doing this. It's his project. Let him own it." Mm-hmm. I said, "Yes, ma'am." I said, "I just want to make sure that my my voice has been heard and I've shown my concerns." No more than five six months later, we've got CMU yeah, block walls. Yeah, there's an issue. Yeah, issues. There's a beam we, not landing yeah. somewhere. And yep. guess what? Our contractors are asking for more fill for concrete. The uh, depressions in the slab for the Yep. Stadium, yep, are not where they need to be. Yep. The walls are off. Yep, everything's off. Everything's off. Everything's off. Yep, the wood floor yep. now has a, a two, three inch concrete at the edge of the wood floor. Yep, in a in a freaking high school basketball stadium. Really? It, I mean, oh yeah. I'm I, sorry. The school is not going to accept a concrete floor as part of their basketball court. That's right. not going to happen. Right. And, and and it's just look, ex- years and experience doesn't always mean you're right. Exactly. And, I, and, and if you can learn as a green guy the right way, that doesn't, that doesn't earn you the master paycheck, right? Right. But that also gives you the confidence that you need to go through your career knowing yes. that you were trained correctly. Yes, absolutely. And that's extremely important. Absolutely. Years, you know, to sum yeah. that all up, years mean shit. Absolutely. Yeah. The knowledge, the correct knowledge is what's useful on the job site. Yeah. You know, I, I would have to agree with that 100%. Yeah. Well, so, so we've talked, we, you know, we kind of dove into like, you know, I've had, I've had lakes that were hundreds of feet in the wrong spot. You told me about that earlier. I, I have had to dig an entire lake and fill in another lake. Well, okay. This brings up another aspect and, and I know we're already getting past We're we're at an hour 10, but we're, this is I'm, fun. I'm, I'm having a blast. This, this brings this up another like thing. This stuff's like antifreeze. It's just warming me on the inside. Is it? Do you want more? No, we, I'm we good. I got, I'm, I'm halfway. I'm officially. I mean, so we're, it, it, for those who are listening, we're, we're at my, the hotel that I booked. They, they gave us this little conference room to hang out in. and uh, We made friends with the, the lady. <laughs> <laughs> she made a few extra bucks tonight. She did. But uh, it's where I was getting at, if I can remember where my thought was. Whiskey. We were talking about whiskey. 
I've only drank half, and it's you've right refilled there. yours twice. At, at least three times. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm forgetting. He doesn't have to drive anywhere, folks. Well, what was, yeah, yeah, that's where my point was. But what, what was the last point you made as far as? <sighs> We've had whiskey. <laughs> Before that, talking about actual process here. Oh, I lost it at whiskey. Yeah, okay, whiskey. You lost me at whiskey. Ah, I know I'll listen back to this and be like, that's the point I was trying to make. That, there's nothing wrong. No. Oh, well, so, so we'll go on to. It was, um, it was you know, t- well, we were talking about time on the job site doesn't really have any effect as yeah. far as, you know, knowledge or understanding how to do the job correctly. You know, you and I talked about that earlier today of, yeah. you know, you can have a 40-year guy that's been teaching it wrong for 40 years. Absolutely. Just because you've spent your entire life in this industry doesn't mean you're doing anything correctly. And on the flip side, you could be doing everything correctly. You just have to share that information. That's also also yeah. key. You know, if you're listening to this and you are that 20, 30-year-old veteran of the industry, you know, share some of your stuff. Yeah. Tell absolutely. those guys what, what mistakes you've made and, and, and those dead ends that you've hit. To, Look, to tra- s- transparency wins. Absolutely. Every time. Absolutely. Look, there's not, there's not a single uh, bad example that's not worth sharing. Absolutely. Because I, I can tell you that I personally have learned more through bad examples than I have good ones. I would, agree with, I would agree with that. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've I, learned I, by watching bad people do bad things. I forget the number I told you and your dad that I've, that I've cost companies, but it's, it's, you know, it's millions of dollars and that's all from doing it the wrong way. And, and then, you know, the next day after getting a brand new excavator, ruining it, let's not do that again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah. But I mean, as yeah, what's, I, what's 400,000 between friends, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No I don't big know. deal. I don't know. It's just, I've lost, I've lost two excavators in my life, you know, to seriously to Davy Jones locker gone. They're mm-hmm. gone. We, we got them out, but we cut them in pieces and pulled them out with every single was record. Was it one of those, like, swamped in the mud kind of deals? Gone. Uh, oh the, one of them, one of them uh, I was sitting on mats, and we were filling in a pond. We overdug a pond because we had unsuitable material on the job yeah. site, so we were going to put it in the bottom of the pond. I, I remember where I was going. So finish. Go ahead. Don't forget. You do it. Okay. I'm not going to forget my, the story. My, my thing was that you mentioned having a 100-foot difference in in the grade yes on that pond yes right? yes I, the pond was in a hundred feet different in every direction in the wrong spot so my my my, my point to and it why, was a big pond why training your people is important not only to save money on on the production value not to only save money on the training aspect but also to catch problems before they happen you know if i had been trained on reading and understanding blueprints at that at that time you know i was the excavator operator and i dug that hole i moved one hundred and fifty thousand yards of dirt in the yeah. wrong spot yeah I don't know if you guys well, that are listening know what 150,000 yards of dirt looks like. Imagine being the estimator. Oh my goodness. And bidding bidding that much more import on that job. 150 to 300. That's where we went. We doubled. <laughs> and I don't I don't know if you guys know now, now what get it costs this. to bring dirt in, but. Think about this. <laughs> think about this. If you're that contractor that saves your client that much money because you found a mistake, Absolutely. do you think they're going to hire you back? Oh yeah. Absolutely. freaking oh, yeah. Lully. You know, I had been trained efficiently on how to run the excavator and how to put the dirt every time in the truck the right way. Yeah. I had no idea I was digging in the wrong spot. <laughs> well, so and, and I wasn't you, trained on reading blueprints or, you know, at, lit, until later, obviously. I can't be the only one filling my cup Listen, up, man. my cup is just, was four feet tall. No, it it's was just not. still full. It was four feet tall of ice. Okay? <laughs> you said we were going to sip whiskey, not I chug was. whiskey. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just sipping on it. This is a long podcast. No, so, <laughs> so, <clears throat> That, it's getting good. We're getting, we're getting, we're, we're getting somewhere, yeah, right? We're getting so, somewhere. So like, uh, and so I haven't even launched podcast number five. So this is podcast number six. I haven't launched podcast number so five. So I'm not even going to hear this until like, no, no, no. I'm retired. I'm going to launch, I'm going to launch both soon. The reason why I haven't launched podcast number five is we mentioned some personal stuff in the podcast on number five. Okay. Uh, I heard about this. Yeah. And, and since then the personal stuff, uh, I'll just, since we've had whiskey and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> I, I, I released. I, I told on podcast number five we were expecting child number three. Oh, really? Yeah. We, Congratulations. We lost child number three. Oh. So I didn't. Uncongratulations. I, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. It, it's it's Man. it's done in the past. It, it was hard when it happened, and I didn't. I, I didn't, have I have not personally had to deal with this, but my in laws. Yeah. Have had you know I I I can't say I'm sorry enough. Yeah. It it was uh absolutely not expected we blame certain things on on this that the world is going towards um 
because we've done research and, and found that there could be some issues as far as what the current state of the world is going on oh, that yeah. could have yep. caused it. Yep. Um, and <clears throat> so do our doc- our doctors think the same thing. But it was it was just kind of like it was a hard time. Yeah. Oh, I I it, can't even imagine. It, 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 I told hit. you some of my personal stuff today that yeah. I just had to deal with with this shit going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. So it's nuts. I'm with you. Well, and, and 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 I didn't. I had always heard of this happening, and I had never. I had never. I didn't know how hard it would have hit me until it actually hit me. I agree. And then it 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 hurt pretty bad. Um, There's nothing that can really affect me as a man. Yeah. You know, as an alpha male, and I consider myself a serious alpha male. I will kill for my family. One hundred percent. I will kill everybody yeah. on this earth for my family. I was just telling my dad that earlier. Seriously, I because we were talking about child abduction. Yes, has gone up, and I was like, yes. there, "There's not a soul on this earth that will stop me from killing every human being." You know, to I find will. Her. I will go. I will yeah. go. That's that's uh, Forrest's dad in the background. He's, yeah, he's been. Uh, he's not. Uh, He's got a beer back there, actually. He's back there he's drinking, drinking some beer. Yeah, he's drinking. He's hanging in there. You know, Trooper Trooper of the Year Award. He's hanging Honestly, in there. We were going to give him a, a microphone. <laughs> he said, no, it's okay. <laughs> um, going back to the family thing, you know, yeah. there, you know, God bless you. Uh, I'm sorry you've had to deal with that, but there's nothing that tears you to the core more than Absolutely. a child. Yeah. Well, you know, I've lost loved ones in my life. Yeah. Even recently, I just lost a, a very good lady friend of mine yeah uh that's just you know friends of the family just a couple of days ago and you know yeah. nothing compares to a kit you know i will yeah. i will i will cut you absolutely while i smile at you for my daughter there, so i can't imagine there's no amount of remorse that i'll I have i can't even imagine so i mean it's it and, and it was just it, it was unexpected we we got we had our first two extremely easy mm-hmm. it was extremely easy to to get pregnant it was extremely easy to have them it was just it was easy so like it was almost like we were like it sounds weird, but it was almost like we were like meant to have kids. Like yep. it, it was just an yep. easy process. Just pumping out, yeah, exactly, right. Yep. So to have the third one, yep, not it's it devastating. Was, it was really weird um, in a whole, and and I just I felt like I didn't want to produce the fifth podcast, and and I have worked on it. There is some stuff I cut out of it, mm-hmm. um, but there is some stuff that I left in there, and and hey. part of it is announcing it just because it was good information. What you we know, talked about was family. I wanted to say kudos to you for for even opening that. You know, that dialogue, yeah. even though it's not posted yet or, or yeah. broadcasted yet, you know, kudos to you for being able to open that door, you know, and, 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 and voice those opinions because, you know, we've, we've said a few things today to each other that, you know, really yeah. mean some shit, you know, yeah, absolutely. and, and you only go around this thing one time. So, yeah. you know, well, like I said, it's earlier, good on you to be able to talk about that. Transparency wins. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. And Holding not, it in isn't going to do anything for you. Well, and it's not going to do anything for anybody else. Absolutely. Either, right? So, like, it, and there are millions of people that have dealt with I dealt. And that's what I, I was about to say, too. You know, you know, we're on top of the world right now with our jobs and all, but life is life. You yeah, know, we absolutely. all, everybody's got that shit well, and, going and on. I, and I took, I took a few things off my plate when that happened as well. Um, and I, and I, I was just like, hey, I need to spend more time with family. I need to spend more time focusing on my mm-hmm. job. And I need to take more time away from this yep. or this. Yep. And I did that. Um, and Not that it <laughs> should have to come to that, you know, but, yeah. you know, I told you t- today that I lost my father-in-law. Yeah. You know, that it really squared up some stuff for me. It freaking hurts, you know, it, yeah. And, and he wasn't ready to go. You know, I wasn't ready to lose him. Well, y- your father-in-law so, is, is as old as my dad that's standing over there. Yep, yep. And Sorry, I, Dad, I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to. I didn't mean <laughs> yeah, to just. We're, we're not. We're not throwing you to the fire yet. You're. We're not done with you yet. Yeah. You know, and that's that's exactly what I said about my father-in-law when I lost yeah. him. I wasn't done with him yet. You know, I still well, have and, things to. And prove we've to got him. look. We've got. Uh, we've got people on our team that are having um, family issues mm-hmm. that are that are that are struggling hard right now, and 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 life happens. Absolutely. Right? And and work continues. Life has to go on. Right. And, and that's, what, that's the shittiest part that you have to realize is no matter what's going on with you, the sun's going to come up tomorrow and yep. people are going to go to work. That's Here's, what, that's what hurts your feelings. And when you realize that it doesn't revolve around you. Yeah. Well, and here's here, I guess here's where I find comfort is that, um, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but there's not a single thing physical on this earth that's going to last forever. Yep. Right? And, um, and when we talked about, when we talk about training and, and all this kind of stuff, we just have to realize in general that life Life happens and it goes. Yep, yep. And and like I said, we've got we've got people on our team that are that are going through some stuff, tough times right now. And and I wanna I wanna be there for them. But absolutely, sometimes the best thing that you can do is just say, hey, we're here for you. Yep. If you need it, but yep. deal with it as you may. Because there's you you've gone through tragedy as well as I have, and there's no tragedy that compares to that. Well, and I don't. But I don't tragedy know. is. Tragedy. I don't want to say that because it's I've never I haven't dealt with it. 
I haven't dealt with a lot of tragedy in my life. Really? I mean, I've, I've, dealt, I've dealt with some tough times, but I haven't dealt with a lot of... I've dealt with friends dying. I've dealt with I th- um, a I, lot of people dying, but I, I haven't dealt with a lot of family dying, and that's one of my biggest fears is family dying. I think as soon as you realize... Like I said, I just, just the other day lost, like, yeah, a family friend. You know, just... It, they would call me for electrical work. I would, yeah. I would help with their farm. You know, I just love these fucking people. Yeah. They're just good, wholesome people that you don't run into anymore. Yeah. I didn't... You know, I don't owe them anything. I didn't, I don't talk to them, you know, basically ever. You know, I just see them on Facebook. If I see them at the restaurant or something, I'm going to definitely go up and say hi. But it crushes you when you start to realize that, you know, like, yeah, our parents are leaving. Our, our, you know, the world isn't as safe and as protected as you thought when you were a young guy. You know, you want, the older you get, the more you realize that how fragile and how, yeah, you know, not every day counts. Every freaking breath counts. Well, every second you're taking. <laughs> we were counts. having my dad and I were having a talk this morning in the truck. By the way, it's it's really nice. So my my dad lives in Florida right now. Well, he lives in like three other states. But this is this is the other reason <laughs> that I was absolutely flabbergasted by Forrest coming down here because he told me that not only was he coming to see me, but his dad was here, and it was a you know a dad son visit, and yeah. I can't be more for that. So that's awesome. This yeah. was like the. For well, forest, so, this is like the dad. Uh, how long has it been since we've seen each other? Six, six to eight months. That's at least. too long. And and I, I and and so my extended family, his side of the family, I don't see but like once every five years. Mm-hmm. And it and that, like I'm not as close to that side of the family as I as I should be. I have the same thing going um, on now. Granted, if they're listening to this, y'all are crazy. And <laughs> so <laughs> so it's, you know what though, reasons, but, but the crazy part of the family is the one you should really stick to because yeah. it's the good stories it's never going to be that's boring true. that's true you know well and and so, i mean so like uh yeah well yeah. so i mean i, I my, my dad lives here in, in florida and and i wanted to come down to florida anyway it was pretty inexpensive to come down here and it was just it was just okay it's cool i get to Network, I get to learn more about what you do, Gary, and I get to learn more And about- likewise, I was I was yeah. pumped that you were coming in town and I could hang out with you. Well, I think here's the and, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Michael Bowman. If you don't follow Michael Bowman, I, I what will, the hell are you doing? Right I will now? uh second this shout out because I uh Yeah. You know, this not only does this guy like bring you back to Zen or back to center, but he yeah. <laughs> you know, he just makes you feel like you're 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 yeah. you're with him and we're all together and you know, he's just a a good wholesome guy, you know. Let me explain something. There are few people on earth that are truly genuine. Yep. Michael Bowman is one of them. Yes. Um, and and I <clears throat> and I'm a stranger. Yeah. And the guy will answer my phone call or my text. Yeah. It, I could text him right now. He truly cares yes, about he the does. industry. And yes, and he I does. think and, and I think it's people like that that um that give us the the continuous drive to do what we're doing because that's that's what we're trying to accomplish is is a community of people that work in this industry that love this industry that want to provide more for the industry that want to see this industry succeed absolutely and we'll see more people come into the industry um you and know i've I've made my entire living in this industry is why I owe it yeah to the next person absolutely I owe it to them because it's yeah. this has been you know i i i I think I'm halfway you yeah. know i yeah. I've got bigger dreams there's 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 more there's more steps yeah. the big ones well and that's that's kind of what I was getting to is like we, I'm very I, happy with what I've done yeah. and the people I've met in this be. industry you know this industry has tr- treated me very well yeah. once you break through that tough exterior honestly you know yeah well and that's kind of kind of where I was getting with it is is that um we we strive to to chase the dream of building a better industry for the people that come afterwards, um, and and we constantly, my dad and I talked about this early. We constantly learn every day that we learn, or that that we know nothing. Exactly. Yeah. The, 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 and I told him, I said, the, the longer that I'm alive, the more. And I'm I'm, I'm very young, uh, and and I, I've realized that the longer I, every single day I learn that I I don't know crap. Mm-hmm. And 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 the you know, older that's you a, get, that's a, that's the more good, you know that you know nothing. That's a good standpoint to have is that open eyed. You know, I, I am just as big-eyed and ready for absorbing information exactly. as I was on day one. Absolutely. Well, and I, and I just, I don't know. I think when, when, we, when we look at changing the industry, that's, that's kind of the core of it, right, is that there, there's a group of people that, that you can go on a job site and will tell you how great and, and, and glorious and godlike they are. Mm-hmm. They know everything. They're the mm-hmm. best. You can't, you can't teach them anything. Yep. Uh, and, and the genuine people like Michael Bowman yep. and like 
like very few others out there. No, and he's he's you know honestly he's more seasoned than both of us put together. He has and, and more he knowledge acts, within and he, him, and he than, acts like he is uh, ready to listen to us at any moment. Absolutely, and you know what's funny, and I, and I have to just like laugh at him, uh, laugh in a good way, Michael. Mm-hmm. That every time, every time I get on the phone, and I, I'm on the phone with him quite often, is every time I get on the phone with him, he tells me that he learns so much from having these conversations back and forth with, with me and him. Mm-hmm. And I tell him I learn a ton. But how can he learn anything from me when he's, he's at the stage where he's at? I know, I know. And, he's, and I, it, he's, it baffles me because, I mean, he, we're, we're right. Like, and, and this is where I was kind of getting is that, like, the, reason, the main reason why I came out here was not to come – as though I'm going to network with companies out here right. in Florida because I want to come back home. I want to start shooting out here in Florida. I want to change companies in Florida. But the main reason why I came out here is because you and me conversing on topics that are that are critical mm-hmm. to the industry's change in the next 10 years. And we both have the same passion. You know, the first phone yeah. call that we had together, I knew yeah. right away. You know, I got off the phone smiling, saying. Yeah. Me too. You know, <laughs> a, a part of my friends, but. Fuck yeah. That's what I, that's what I said yeah. when I got off the phone with you the first time. Is, I'm so glad. You know, I'm so glad. Fuck yeah. Because I'm with you. That's... And, and, I'm, and, I, and I, I, I don't know if you've noticed this about me, but I don't give a shit about the money. Me either. Yeah. I, don't, I do not care. Every time we start talking about money, I, I change the subject. Because Absolutely. Because this is about giving my information to as many Look, people as I can before I leave this earth. Now, now and I it's, can't... And it's not, it's not secrets. Yeah. It's just information that I have learned the hard way yep. that we can skip right to you learning the easy way. Let's yeah. let's skip all the the tough trials and tribulations and give you that knowledge. A, a, a lot of people will give us a lot of money to come out there and yes and consult them, but guess what? Yes, we we make next to nothing. Yes, as a company, mm-hmm. okay, and that's not that's not designed like that. Like I'd like I would love to make millions. Yep. Money's not my money's not you, my you, goal. You almost have to just okay. give your soul up to this industry to help them because well, and, it's. And here's the thing: is is uh, I don't make a salary. Mm-hmm. I don't make money. Mm-hmm. I I make enough. Yeah, to keep it going tomorrow. To barely pay my rent. Yep. Okay. Now the rest of that money goes to my people. Mm-hmm. And the and the reason why I pay for my people is because I believe that they've got the heart and soul yep. to drive the industry to change. Yep. And I look at my people every single day and the people that I want to hire and say, these people can make a difference in the industry. Absolutely. They're not going to make me any more money. They're, I'm not charging my clients money for a profit. I'm really charging them to just change the industry. And, and, yep. and I, would, I want like everybody else to be rich in this life. Yep. Like I told you earlier, yep. I, agree. I, I would love to have There's, an airstrip in my backyard with a private jet. You know, I'm, okay? I'm, I'm going to quote the late, great Bob Marley. I love How can you not? And I'm going to say, time like this. and I'm going to say, there's two different types of riches, yeah. and money's neither one of them. Yeah. You know, family riches and and having you know a, a clean conscience and yeah. you're just excited for the next day. Yeah. That's as rich as I could ever get. Yeah. I've had, I've had more. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to like boast, but. Come on, Gary's a Gary's a hidden billionaire. I've spent <laughs> I've spent more money than you could ever imagine on stupid shit. Mm-hmm. And 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 worked and made fortunes, lost fortunes. Yeah, I don't care about the money. It's it, all about the 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 drive and the next step. Bef- you know, when yeah. I started early, it was about that next piece of equipment, mastering yeah. it. Yeah. Now that I I don't want to say I've mastered all of them because there's always you know I again I'm 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 big eyed and open hearted. I yeah. I learn every single day. There's people that teach me things all all the time, but being able to like. Seriously, do what I love to do. It's a blessing. It, I mean, it's a blessing. Come dude. on, man. You can't you can't get any better than sitting here talking to a like minded friend yeah. in the industry about just what we do for a living and 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 you know having yeah. smiles on our face and and sipping whiskey and having passion. There's nothing better than this. You know, we could be sitting here fishing and drinking whiskey or talking about dirt work, and I'm just as content and well, happy. And, and, and I want to I want to reiterate, we're having this good time for you guys. Yes, I'm just kidding. Yeah, all this, all this, all this. His third whiskey and my half whiskey is just for you guys. Hey, look, look. <laughs> yeah. I, I just look. Okay, uh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a secret, Do just it. so, just so Forrest knows. This is probably more whiskey than I've drank in the last four years, right here yeah. at this table. That's awesome. That's 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 what Forrest means to me. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I'm really, I'm really. Uh, I'm not a drinker, but honored. Uh, you know, to loosen up and to get. 
this conversation going yeah. is is much well, needed. I'm not a big drinker either. I just I I believe uh, good honest discussion causes change yes. in a positive manner. Yes. And and I think that the, the few people that do listen to this, we hope that you get something out of this. And whether it be training related, whether it be life related, whether it be in your personal life or work related, um, the goal of this is just to just chat Absolutely. in real life. And, and that's, you know, I was telling my, you know, dad, my dad this is that, like what you were saying, it's, it's a blessing to do what we do. And, and I, I, I looked at him while he was driving us back down here because, you know, he saved me some money on a rental car. He drove yep. down from Ocala or from Gainesville to hang out with me. You know, his dad swooped in, and I, can't, I cannot get in between the dad-son relationship, but I did drive my right-hand drive Japanese car to Orlando yeah. to pick Forrest <laughs> up from the airport. But... You can't get in between that dad son relationship. There's I was nothing like, sorry, dude, that. he's got yep. a diesel Dodge. Nope, I, can't, no, I can't. I told him on the phone. <laughs> there's nothing important, more important than yeah. that. So hell yeah. Well, I told him. Bring I said, dad. <laughs> I said it, it's amazing uh, that I was stressing over my position for measly money. Yep. Uh, no more than two years ago, and 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 I and I hated my life. Yep. And I and I looked at the industry. I, and I, I've been there more than one time. Yeah. Well, and and I told him. I've I had said, all the cash in the world. Yeah. At my fingertips and been completely miserable. Well, I, I told him, I said, I said, okay, I, I gave my idea for the company long before I even knew mm -hmm. what it was going to be to a superintendent that was a mentor of mine. And he looked at me square in the eye and he said, Forrest, what kind of a million dollar, billion dollar company is going to look at a 23, 24 year old kid and have advice given to them by you? You know, absolutely jack crap. And guess what? He is right. <laughs> yeah. I know absolutely jack crap, but for those clients that I'm working with right now, I'm providing value. No, and, absolutely. And, and it was so absolutely. what is so cool is that, I, is that I took that idea that I had, and though I thought it was crazy, mm -hmm. went out and chased it. You went and, after it. And, and I, am, I am blessed to be able to sit here in my, in my home state. Yep. Happy that I'm back in Florida welcome talking to, to you. Welcome to the FL. Yeah, Welcome man, I, I miss I miss Florida. I I commented on a post today on the airplane that was in Homosassa, Florida. Mm -hmm. This this contractor in Homosassa, and and I don't think they're based out of Homosassa, but they they were rebuilding a bridge in Homosassa. Mm -hmm. When I was twelve years old, I was jumping off that bridge with my friends and really? into the river. Really, and and they're rebuilding it, and I was like, that's just freaking cool. Yep, like that's just my my friend's house. If if they scrolled out of that. That panoramic, just a little bit, mm -hmm. was literally no more than like fifty feet down the road. Really, on the bay. So you like grew up on the bridge. It, it, like we have the same kind of bridge where I'm from. We call it yeah. Rye Bridge, where we used and to it, jump off of. And it was just so cool because you you know uh, Homosassa is known for their manatees. Yep. And and Crystal River, they're known for yep. their like manatee sightings and just gentle giants. They'll just come and gnaw on you. Like, yep. They're just chewing your arm, and they're just not. They're not. My, uh, harmful, but my, my brother and so cool, sister-in-law go up to Crystal River all the time. Yeah, some of the best red fishing you'll ever oh, have. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, power plant and all, you know, oh, some yeah. wonky-eyed fish. Yeah, you, you'll get find that, some, you get that three-eyed fish that's a little bit longer than everybody else. I'm telling you, if, if anybody <laughs> in my, there's not a single person in my hometown that knows what I do today. There's not, really? There's not a person in my, my high school that keeps track of me. I have very few friends. You know, that's school. a good, that's a, I know we, we could talk about stuff in life forever but yeah. that's also a good topic is you know i literally have friends i can count on one hand yeah by the time i was 35 <laughs> i mean two you know honestly maybe. honestly real good wholesome friends yeah. that you know i could i could burn their house down and they're going to call me tomorrow absolutely that's what that's yeah that's well they're the friends that i described that i would i would kill for or i'd die for yes their family yes right? absolutely and and i still have and and i t highly doubt he listens to this podcast but I've got two friends that were extremely close to me in high school. One was Brendan, mm -hmm. um, and and then the other was uh, Devin, and and uh, Brandon, Brandon, not Brendan. Sorry, I've got a friend now named Brendan, but yep. Brandon and Devin in my high school class that were literally brothers to me. Yep. And we we, I, I'll try to reach out to my my friend Devin a lot of times. He just doesn't reach out anymore. High school friends just fade. Right? They do. But but I have, still like, I, have I still one. care for those guys. I have one friend that I've had for. Yeah. Honestly, since like sixth grade. Yeah. Corey Schaefer. I talk to him every single day. That name sounds really familiar. I, I talk to Corey, my buddy Corey Schaefer. Shout out to Corey Schaefer in what Maine. He, what does he do? He lays tile right now. That, he, he, that name he's is had a, a bunch of and, and successful know, tile companies. That, that might be a common name, but that, that's a really. It is pretty common, yeah. That's a name that I, I 
I he's know. my he's my ride or die bitch. He's yeah, he's, right? he's there for me no matter what's going on. You know, yeah. I I could be the worst person in the world. He's my best friend. That's my buddy Charlie. Yeah, he's just Honestly, always got my back. Yeah, there's no doubt that like there's like I've got I've got one friend that I call like my friend friend. Yeah, yeah. And that's my, my buddy Charlie. Yeah. Like I honestly like and I have a true brother. You know, I have a true blood brother that's 4 years younger than me than me yeah. and I and I love my brother. Shout out to Chris James, you know, I'm going to yeah. I want to shout you out. He works for uh, Sarasota County Utilities. Uh, but Corey, you know, that that friend that I've had yeah. through high school that you know, the friend that I've told all the secrets to that have seen exactly. me do the things that I shouldn't have done. <laughs> you know, that's I like I said a on, I can count them on one hand, yeah. and, and and my true friends, I can count on a couple fingers. Like you there, said, you know, it's very few and far yeah. between the people that ride or die with you, no matter what you do. Well, you well let me let me dive this back into our podcast. Is that um, if you're young and seeking this industry, there are few things in this world that you can find that are brother like and sister like. Yes, the the construction industry. Absolutely, I would have to agree with that. And and my friend Corey's not because I was in construction. Yeah. The other four friends that I can tell you that I have construction are construction. Yeah, now absolutely. I can my, my dad. You know, like Luke. You know, I know I know you have different ties to Luke than I have, but yeah. I have straight job site friendship ties. I didn't meet yeah. Luke until we met on a job site. I mean, I know? barely know Luke. I I love Luke to death because I, I know he's a genuine human being. He, but, he is. He's but I just, rare. I mean, I don't know him very well. Like he's, um, I would love to know him more, obviously. But like that's the thing is, yeah, like you've got friends like that. Yep. Lifetime dirt friends, you know, yeah. uh, uh, every six months, There's you end up bond. just running into each other on a job site or, you There's know, There's a bond somewhere. you cannot match. And, and I yep. bet I bet my dad sitting over in, in, in the side can probably attest to this. That oh, he's probably got work friends. Look, well, I'm, I'm about to say the opposite. I'm going to say in corporate environment, he's got zero friends. Really? Whereas in the dirt industry oh, or, yeah. or within the construction, they're spread all over the country. Yeah. So, yeah. but, but that that's over... How many years have you been doing what you've been doing? 35, 35 years. years. Yep. Now, now he, I honestly have, I have 20 guys I can call right now. I can't that there's dirt, the word dirt in their name I that can't. I could call right now. That would come here right now. If I said, well, I've got a flat tire. I can't, I could call right now just you, because you know of I've my, that? just, just because of that mentality that you talked about, yeah. like helping each other on the job site, just like electricians and all where I've helped them with the front end loader because I have it. That type of friendship, I've I've definitely kept a few of those over the the you know yeah. like superintendents that I've worked for you know like the builder superintendent not yeah. my superintendent the builder superintendent you know I've I've got a couple of those you know like Mark Canofa that I've worked for on like seven different yeah. projects to where it doesn't matter what company I work for they're gonna hire us because I work for them yeah that's you know those relationships only happen in the dirt industry. I, I only have one true friend that will come to my aid at any time I call, and that is Charlie. Really? Yeah. Well, you need to, you need to add me to the list. You're I'll, at I'll it be right there. now. Yeah. Here, so, <laughs> There's so, nowhere that I wouldn't fly just yeah. because I could use the excuse, he needs me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will go, so I've got... I'll go to the end of the air for you. I've got a buddy, and he, he probably doesn't listen to the podcast either because he's lame. He's, a, he, he's an idiot. Uh he he works in the HVAC. Industry. Most of our friends aren't like down with our life. Yeah, down yeah, with our lifestyle as they, far they as still dirt, think, loving dirt. Look, most of the people that I know personally still think that what I do is fake. Yeah, I exactly. guarantee you. Yes. Now, and the people that are even though we podcast, both just discussed earlier today our monthly income from social media. Honestly, that's yes, yes. <laughs> I've got the same thing going Which on. Which is hilarious. People that think it's fake. Like I'm, I'm sure my some of my family think that like what I do is just like, like. Fun, okay. fun and games. Yeah, yes. fun and games. Yeah. They, they don't realize how serious. Like, yes. like when I say I'm tra- trying to change the industry, I'm not. I'm not just trying to change the industry. I'm trying to. And, like I'm going to. I'm, and not I'm only doing to. that, but they're listening. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's amazing. I yes. don't know why anybody would listen to me, but I'm glad you guys do. They're listening. I um, listen. Well, and 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 so anyway, I've got this buddy Jeff, uh, and he he actually works for the school board. Uh, I think in Ocala. Okay. Um, is, is it Ocala? Okay, so uh, not too far from here. He was. <laughs> He was a friend of mine. So we, in college and in high school, we, I, I met Jeff in, in college. Um, and we were the only two in college that were wearing uh, boots and a cutoff mm-hmm. sleeve shirt. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we, the redneck attire? The redneck yes. attire yes. Uh, that, that happens in Gainesville. Okay. Yes. Um, and, and immediately we, we looked at each other. We were like, you like to go hunting? Yep. Absolutely. I like to go hunting. Let's yep. go hunting. And so the, we just became friends real fast. He would call me in college at, like, 
two to five times a week mm-hmm. that he would, hey, bro, hey, are you sleeping? Yeah, I am, bud. Like, I, I got class at 6 a.m. Yep. He's like, uh, I'm stuck in a retention pond in the middle <laughs> yeah, of the neighborhood. Yeah. And, I, and, and, I, and I'm like, bro, you've got a two-wheel drive truck. And he's like, yeah, I know. Uh, it wasn't smart. And I'm like, do you have a girl on the side of your truck? Are you trying to impress somebody? Yep. And he's like, not at all. What are you talking and she's like, yes, you are. And and I'd hear in the background, and I'd be like, bro, you're trying I'm to impress. On, I'm on my way. Yeah. He, he, and he'd be like, dude, I know there's like three cops that live in this neighborhood. Yep. And I'm like, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Yep. Okay. And and, and there, he, he would be like two hours away, and he'd call me, and he'd be like, hey, bro, I'm stuck. Yep. I need your help. And I'd be like, I'll be there. And and, and to me, to See, me it, that was it, fun. It sucks to be that guy, but I'm that guy also. Yeah. I get the phone call to come rescue every single day. And it, I, I actually had fun. I, I enjoy pulling people out of the mud. Yeah. But, uh, and that's, I guess, my redneck side. But it, it, it's, it, it was a lot of fun to do that. I'd be tired, but it, it, was, it was just cool. You know, like, it was fun to do that. Um, but today, if I were to call anybody, it would be one person. Yeah. And now, two, I suppose, if, it, if I'm counting you. can you. call me. But, I mean, like, honestly, if I, were, if I were in the middle of the West. I would bro- come. Broke down. I would come. And I needed somebody, it would be two people. I would come. Yeah. And th- I mean, obviously you dad. Yeah. Dad's no Look, matter dad's what. Dad's don't got, count, okay. Dad's got your back no matter yeah. what. Yeah. No matter. No Absolutely. Matter, you know, a testament to dads, you know, I could call my dad in, in California yeah. and say, I need, I need $5 and I need you to hand deliver it. He'd show up. He'd show up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Dads are like no others, but yeah. having a friend that's like kind of close to that dedication is, Absolutely. is definitely worth well, keeping. It's just, it's just, Better to go to a friend than Absolutely. to go to a dad Absolutely. first, first Absolutely. call. Well, dad's yeah. going to give you a, a lecture and help you. The friend's just going to come gonna help teach you. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which goes back to training because we've gotten way off topic and way off we tangent. Have. But I think, I think uh, going what? back to the people side of things, and we, we'll end this podcast soon because it, it has almost been two hours. And we we took about a half hour trying to set up the freaking podcast, and I did drop and my camera. And he smashed his Yeah, we've had, a, my, we've, had a, we've had a good day. My $4,000 lens landed on the ground and broke, so that's not fun. Um, There's no training that I could ever teach him to 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 solve that problem. You know, he just walked right into the damn thing. <laughs> I, I still, I, I'm still amazed. It's not. I mean, it's not. It didn't shatter. It doesn't look bad. But you and I both know as. I mean, Camera you're operation. a video. You're a videographer. I want to. I'm a heavy equipment operator. Yeah. That your delves, tools matter. Delves in videography. You know, you're 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 screwed. Yeah, well, here's the thing is, is <laughs> slight inconvenience you can't sell. Yes, right? yes. You've got to sell perfection. You know, I don't, want to, um, I don't want to put bad juju on your camera, but we talked about why I have two drones earlier. Because mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I crashed the first one, and I can stay working. So, yeah. so we were talking about this earlier is that I crashed my Mavic 2 into, yep. into the steel column. I've actually got that video on TikTok. If you want to oh, I it. need to watch that. It yeah. was my first uh, viral video on TikTok. Really? Yeah, everyone was like, I mean, every- you're an idiot! And I'm like, yeah, I know that! That's why I freaking posted it. But it probably made enough money to, to fix the drone. I wasn't getting paid for TikTok back then. Oh, man. <laughs> I did not, unfortunately, I did not have the record button on mine when it flew no. at Mach 3 into the ground. <laughs> I, um, unfortunately as a helicopter, you know, an actual helicopter pilot, we haven't talked about that, but I'm, yeah. I'm a, I'm a helicopter pilot at, at, as a recreational helicopter certification, if you want to call it that. Yeah. My natural reaction for an emergency is to pull up back and yeah. up and to do that on the drone is into the ground. Yeah. So. Well, and you can't mix actual flying <laughs> with drone flying. Well, here, <laughs> so, uh, here's the thing is, so I, I, I actually. Back I, is not up. Up yeah, is up. Up is up. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what, what's funny is, so I crashed my drone in New York. Uh, Just was, recently? No, I was telling you, right? I crashed that drone. Yep. Well, four months ago. Uh, so, if you've flown drones at all, you realize that, like, a Mavic drone or, or, or a DJI drone at all, mm-hmm. when you're landing, it will stop at like two yes. foot off the and ground and you have to like force it down and, and yes. you have to force it right so <laughs> this drone didn't realize what altitude it was at and i went to land it and it was just like Ooh, right that, oh yeah it came right, out of the sky like a rock right on the freaking ground and i was like what the hell like i expected it to just go whoop and hover and yep. it, it didn't it just whap right on the ground well now it's sensors are all mixed up 
So I can I can still take video, I can still take photos, but I've got to like do all sorts. You gotta of You got to different... like manually fly the thing now, which is well, no, I, I not ha- cool. I don't. If anybody I, knows drones, no, I manual fly everything. Do you? There's not a single thing I use a setting for. I manual fly. I've got I've got every. So if you see if you see my videos, I've never used a single smart setting on that thing. It's all manual. Well, if anybody's if anybody I don't trust the man the smart settings. If anybody's listening to me, I've I've basically like. Nintendo Google cheat coded everything I've got <laughs> on my drone. I've got every code in there to, to help me fly that thing. Toot, 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 yes. And it just flies itself. Yep. I don't do that because I don't trust it. Like the follow me, it never works with the code. You know, I, I have problems with it all, but I'm greener than you are as far yeah. as the, the aeronautics. Well, and, and I can I can kind of track it myself way better and, and pan over. But anyway, so like all of my all of my post production now is like I've got to tilt it tilted at like a negative three percent. Really? On the on the after production <laughs> because it's because my sensor's off. It's just off just a little bit. Yeah, so yep. it, luckily it didn't break the drone, but it threw uh, the right. It's got all the gimbals and everything off. Yeah. Well, it, it threw the right. It's got like twelve sensors on the thing. Yep. And threw the right sensor off. So I've got to now when I fly it, it flies at like a tilt. Really? Yeah. So I actually have to go into post production and do like a negative three offset yep. on the thing. Set set yeah. it back to flat, which is stupid. <laughs> and, and and I can fix it, uh, but I'm just too lazy. And so I'm you have to buy two drones while you're sending that to DJI Absolutely. for your uh, warranty issue. Then you no, you're they, flying your other drone. I'm supposed to have a calibration. I tried calibrating it and it didn't calibrate right. Yeah. So I just I was like, mm, I'll just buy another one later. Then I haven't bought another one. We talked about calibration earlier, and that's why I don't have the the competitor simulator. Yeah. Because we have to do all that. Let me explain something. Okay, guys, it, it, we're, we're coming up. We're, we're at 146 minutes literally right now. <laughs> or oh, an, an hour and 46 minutes, not 146. It's, it's easier for like-minded people to discuss topics that we've dealt our whole yeah. life in. Well, so, so look, if, if, we, if we boil this down, we're going to end this soon. Um, sorry to all those that are listening to us, just Babylon. But just keep sipping your whiskey. This is going, this is going fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> We could go on for literally days. Mm-hmm. This would be fun. Um, we got to be at the job site at six thirty. Yeah, we have to be on <laughs> yes. site at six thirty. Yeah. So and <laughs> we're not going to get into this. I'm not going to sleep at all tomorrow <laughs> yeah. night or tonight. So, look, <clears throat> as a company aspect, training your people, uh, without a doubt, win win. Um, Absolutely. As as an employee being you know, trained in any this. way possible, also you know e- yeah. even if it's not able in your budget to you know to outside source training yeah figure out a way to do it you know in in house or by yourself or at yeah. your budget you know yeah it doesn't have to be searching you and i out absolutely obviously that's the end goal that we'd like to we, happen we don't think we anybody can, else can do it as good as exactly us, right? that's our, that's we our believe point. that we have the best strategy towards yes. winning yes um but and i do agree is that if if you have any anybody out there that's willing to train mm-hmm. or, or or you need to pay uh to train training at all, um, as long as it's the right way, yes, is worth it. We're and we back you up 100. percent Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's us or somebody else, yes, it doesn't matter. Um, there, there are a lot of people in our industry that are are going above and beyond to train people. They're going above and beyond to train leadership. They're going mm-hmm. above and beyond to do amazing things in the industry. And all I can do is literally just say kudos to those guys. Absolutely. Like, like but, uh, there's not there's not a single person out in the industry that's trying to better the industry that I disagree with. I, I would ditto. Yeah. I would second that. I, I will I will almost give money to see those guys succeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we have to, you know, as much as I hate to say this, you and I can't <laughs> do it alone. We have to have uh, all of the participation with all yeah. of the companies and all of the, you know, the, the, the construction forces. Well, and that's... That's the reason why our vision as a company is to build a community mm-hmm. built by values, yep. like-minded values, yep. that create limitless boundaries. The, the, the key words are limitless boundaries. Absolutely. Because this industry is, is, is capable of doing limitless things as long as we work together. Yep. And, and, and we realize that each of us have tools in, our, in our, our box that can be used for the good of the industry. And I think there are... A handful of companies, Michael Bowman is a great example yep. of companies out there that are, are literally giving their time. Mm-hmm. And, and let me explain. For this. free. And he, not only for he gets, free, but he, he's costing himself money and yeah. time away now, from his family. Now, let me explain something. He is worth every dime you throw at him. He is. Now, and he, and he charges, he, he's, a, he's a consultant, and he, and he does a great job at what he does, and he's worth the money. But darn, that guy will just, he cares. Yes. And, and it's yep. people like that. 
yep. in the industry that that I look at and I say, okay, I'm not alone. And he made a post on in LinkedIn recently that was like, it, it inspires me to have these group of guys out there striving after the same goal. Yep. And I, I felt honored to be on that list because, yeah, and I know he, I know you he should be. You I, should be. I was, I was extremely honored, and, and it was one out of three groups that he mentioned, and I was like. I don't even feel like I should fit in with those three, those other two. Like, like I don't feel like I'm on the same playing field at all. Like I'm trying. I'm. You know, it for doesn't. It, yeah, I know. I know you think, and this is this is your inward thinking because I think the same way. I know you think you're young. I yeah. know you think you can't make a difference. I know you think you're not old enough or haven't done enough to to really shift the tide. Anybody that puts effort into this can shift the tide. Yeah, that's what's that's what's happening. And Mike Bowman is one of those people that puts. I mean. I hate to say it, but more effort than I do. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I genuinely str- care. I, str- I strive to. I care that much, but I, yeah. you know, I, I, I force myself to have that cutoff. You know, at, at five yeah. or six o'clock in the afternoon on a normal day. You know, this is a yeah. special circumstance because you're in town. But I, I value my family time, and I, I really. It's only ten forty two. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but Mike Bowman is one of those guys. You know, like you said. You know, I, yeah. I can message him or I can call him and I can say something or I can bounce something off him or I can ask his opinion. No he's going to give me straight up truths. Yeah. And he's going to give me real world information. And and, well, and, and I think that's funny because you, you mentioned that at like any time you can you can reach out to these people. And if they if they care enough, they'll answer you. Yep. And I think the well, same funny, with the same with you and I, you know, we've yeah. talked about answering these these young men and women and old men and women. You know, I, I told you earlier that I dedicate two hours every single night. Yep. To answering emails, to answering messages, to answering phone calls, to answering yep. texts, to I'll make a YouTube video if I have to to show you how to do Absolutely. what you're going to go do tomorrow. That's what it takes to, to get these people to, yeah. to understand what's going on. Well, and I've got my downtimes, right? Like, so, uh, like, I go to church on Saturday. I don't go yep. to church on Sunday. On Saturday, I shut my phone off. Yep. My phone's off. I don't answer anybody because that's a holy day to me. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Now, and you learned that because you I were, did. You were I, calling I called me all you about day. seven times the other day. Yeah, I know, and, and I didn't answer. Yep. Um, and so no, good for you. No, good for you. Sunset. Good for well, you. Well, because that's that's my belief. Um, but but any other time other than that, I'm I am, I have I have. See, I struggle. I struggle with that. I don't have any set time to where I won't yeah. give you attention. Well, and and the only reason is because like. It's it's religious and it's important to me as like as like core value in my belief. Yep. And and so like I've got I've got uh, what I'd like to call clients that don't pay me mm-hmm. that that are that have actually texted me and been like, hey man, like I just appreciate you like responding on time. Like mm-hmm. like no matter what time I text you, it could be like one a.m. in the morning. Like I get a text back. Yep. Like I can ask you a question and you're just like, and yep. and, 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 and I get a I get an answer and. They like that's, genuine appreciate. That. That's important. Even if the answer is, I'll text you in the morning. I'll find out. Yep. Or or I'll get you your information. Yeah. Or hey, I'm sleeping right now, but I'm on it. Bro, I'm never sleeping. Yep. I I know that. <laughs> I know that. No, but I I, I mean, okay, we'll we'll sum this up. We're coming up on two hours. We know people don't want to listen for two hours. Um, I know I'm going to get grief for two. Hours. This is my second two hour podcast. In that's a row. okay. N- episode five was two hours as well. Good things fly by. We've talked. Um, we've covered not only the training issues that need to be covered, but. Life. Humanity, humanity issues, life, you know, yeah. we're, we're both, you know, I, I hate to say this with my gray beard sitting here, but we're both <laughs> veterans of this industry. I don't it's know. It's hard to I say. I don't know if I could put myself in that you category. Know, I'm, I'm a veteran of this industry, you yeah. know, and, and, and you are too. You know, if, I mean, if you've done your 10 year and you're still in the same yeah. focus, I think Coming you're up a veteran. on 12 years. Yeah. Man. So you're a veteran of this industry. Um, to be I sitting, started at a young age is all. To be sitting here and have, you know, even one person hear this and, and it changed their direction on what they're doing. So let me. Success. We, we are uh, live streaming on TikTok. And which, Instagram. I have one Instagram. person left on Instagram. There, there's one it's person. nighttime. And, and, and this will be the last. There's one person that said, uh, and, and this is just going into, into what you just said, is his comment was, you guys definitely have changed my way of thinking about work. Bring this type of attitude to work. I can go home tonight thinking we've done everything we needed to do. Honestly, dude, that that comment alone, uh, and I don't even know this guy. He's on TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know him personally, but th- th- that's the kind of stuff that it just. It, if I reach out to one person, if one person hears this this podcast, um, it's it's worth me flying out here and spending the time with you and just getting to better this industry. Um, and likewise for me. Yeah, it's just it's just cool. It's freaking cool. So thank you guys. What 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 we'll do is we'll end it there. Thank you guys uh, for listening to the podcast. Thank you for 
sharing the podcast if you do that. If you learned anything, if you got anything out of this podcast, please share it. Um, if you didn't, leave it alone. Um, screw you. No, but yeah. no, but honestly, look, look. You know, no matter how big we think we are, we're all human. We've Absolutely. all come from the same spot that you think yeah. you are right now. It's nothing is unachievable. Nothing. If you put your time and effort into it. Hashtag limitless boundaries. Limitless. I I just think um, I, I just appreciate everybody that's creating this community with me, um, and that is on our team and is making things happen. Uh, I think eventually we'll change the game in this industry. I think eventually we're gonna change the world in this industry, um, regardless of who believes in us or not. You know, I'm and not anybody important for us, but I wouldn't be sitting here if you weren't doing something right. I appreciate that. I mean that. That's awesome. I mean that. That's really cool. You know, I, re- I care about this industry, and I would only sit with people that likewise. Yeah. And and that's the thing is, like like we said, the, the passion, it's 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 11 o'clock. Yep. And and yep. I wouldn't and, be and up. I don't, and I don't feel like I need to stop. I don't either. Yep. I, I feel like 11 o'clock is fun. Like, I know Dad fun. does. I know Dad. <laughs> Dad's Dad, over there ready to go nine. You've nine. got a key card to the hotel room. Yeah. You, can, you can head up there. You don't have to listen to this whole thing. No, but anyway, guys, look, if, if you've listened to this podcast, you got anything out, please share it. I really appreciate it. Um, also, go check out our YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, look, our Absolutely. goal. If you're not following Eagle Eye, who are you following? Honest, yeah, there you go. Honestly. Exactly. Well, um, our, our thing is, look, we're here to create a community of like-minded individuals who are striving to change the construction industry for the better. And it will, it will without a doubt, change for the better. Absolutely. But it, it requires everybody uh, to participate and, and, and not just, not just Gary and I, but everybody. And that doesn't mean that you have to quit your operator job and go strive for something that you don't know how to do. Yep. But that just means be part of it. Um, it, like share comment, whatever you want to do. Uh, I, I appreciate all of it. And, um, we just enjoy doing this podcast com- completely candid. It's not scripted. Absolutely. And, and that's the goal of these podcasts. Sit down with a, a bottle of whiskey, um, Drink four of them like I have, and yeah, just talk construction. He's got more balls than I got. I'm almost I cross-eyed with a three-quarter glass. Hey, uh, do you need me to drive you home? No. Okay. No, I'm good. Not me. Dad, yeah. you want to do it? I don't have the truck anyway. It's my think, dad's truck. I think Dad's so. going to walk him to the room tonight. Oh, I'll be fine. <laughs> anyway, we, we really appreciate you guys. Uh, we will end it. And I don't remember which song we wanted to end off with, but I'm going to play this the, one. So, it was guys, the bottom left. I know that. Bottom left. Bottom right. Bottom right. I don't know. It was the bottom. Hey, it's the bottom one. Yep. Anyway. Behind the scenes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you have listened to the Built on Blue Collar podcast. This is with Gary James. <laughs> Holla. Holla. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening. Share this. Later.